Hockey is brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Your Missouri, Illinois, Lincoln Mercury dealers. McDonald's restaurants, your place for extra value meals. By Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. The Discover Card, the card with the big payback. Your Midwest GMC truck dealers, Bellman, Bomberito, and Brocklin GMC. Alton Bell Casino, always your best bet. Boatman's with home equity loans designed to do just one sensible thing, save you money. Your neighborhood, St. Louis Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Corporate mortgage services, where the American dream becomes reality. Hardy's restaurants for crispy, juicy fried chicken. And buy Coca-Cola, always best on ice, always Coca-Cola. Hedekin at the red line shoots it in. Belfort clears it up the boards to Chelios. Now, of course, one thing you've got, not only a small ice surface, but a slow one. It's center. Blue score. Stasny. Stasny. Oh, what a big win. Stasny with a goal. Stasny with a goal. That was the last meeting between the St. Louis Blues and the Chicago Blackhawks two weeks ago. Tonight, the St. Louis Blues return home as they host the Chicago Blackhawks. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the St. Louis Arena. I'm Mike Lang. Ken Wilson is on assignment along with Joe Micheletti and the Blues return home right in the midst of a big battle down the stretch run, Joe, and uh, they're looking for a little room to move up and to get in the playoff picture. Yeah, this is a team that has struggled, played indifferent hockey for a while, and but since the new players have been in the lineup, Mike, this is a team that has played much better, especially on this road trip, playing well in Florida and also playing a good game in Detroit. Meanwhile, the standings, if you look at them right now, Detroit ahead in the, in the uh, Central Division, I should say, by four points over Toronto, and right now Calgary, of course, is going to win the Pacific. They'll be the number two seed in the division. Of course, the Blues will either play Toronto or Dallas when the Chicago Blackhawks come to town, and they have been a cool team. They are 2-7-1 in their last 10 games, just the opposite of the St. Louis Blues, as the Blues have done very well. In the last nine games against Chicago, they are 6-2-1, and one. and I know that uh, right now Bob Berry, the coach of the Blues, would really like to see things go his way, and he's made a couple of changes to get, get the offense going. Yeah, this has been a team that's going through a, uh, a somewhat of a, a different look as well. You know, in the past, we've, we've known the Chicago team to be big, tough, play a physical game, but like the Blues, they have gone with more talent up front. When you look at some of the new faces on this team, uh, well, first of all, let's talk about Peter Nedved uh, being switched to the wing now with Bob Barry trying to put together two full lines. So Peter Nedved, normally a center, is going to be playing left wing with Brett Hall on the other side and Peter Stosny in the middle. So Bobby Barry will have two his two best lines put together for this game. And a lot of new looking, uh, new faces on the Chicago team too. They have brought in some new people and they brought some speed to their lineup. Yeah, they really have speed in you. Tony Amante came over from the New York Rangers, just 23 years of age with a great deal of talent. Paul Isabar, we know him within the division, was with Detroit, had some very good years with Detroit, but not a very good year in Winnipeg. He is now on this team. And then back on defense, Gary Suter. Boy, he's had some terrific years in Calgary over the years, and he should solidify the Hawks defense. Uh, it's always a great division battle. Bruce Affleck and Rick Mahar are standing by downstairs. I know they're looking forward to the game. Gentlemen? We certainly are, Mike, and really the thing that we look at right away is the two goaltenders, uh, two great goaltenders who have been the main backstop for these teams the last couple of years, Rick. They really have, and it started with Eddie Belfour. He's kept this team second in penalty killing over the last four years, and they're not going to change this year. I think they'll finish second. And he's kept his goals against at 2.5 or better for the last four years. On the other hand, Curtis Joseph has kept his team in the top ten of penalty killing the last three years, but this year is the first year they, they might finish out of the top ten. As you look at this battle, uh, Chicago always likes to have a quick start and try and win it in the first period, don't they? They really do. They come out flying, and not unlike Chicago Stadium. They like to start quick and get a lead and build from there. Now, it's hard to believe this may be the last regular season meeting between these two teams in this building. It's the 178th meeting. It should be a good one, and a dandy the fans are looking forward to, Mike. All right, Bruce and Rick, and in just a moment, the St. Louis Blues will host the Chicago Blackhawks. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey.
Gary Feeler with the singing of the national anthem here at the arena. And we'll check the goaltenders for tonight's contest. Well, our goaltenders, as Rick and Bruce were talking about, Ed Belfour, after a five-game layoff, is back in goal for the Chicago Blackhawks, looking for his 35th win of the season and, of course, a very impressive goals against average. Meanwhile, Curtis Joseph, who played a terrific game in Detroit on Sunday afternoon, will be back looking for his 34th win of the season. The officials for the games tonight, Don Koharski is a referee, Pat DePuzo and Dan McCourt are the linesmen. Fly Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. Now the crowd's all ready to go here, Mike, and these two teams, when they get together, it's always a great battle here at the arena. The season series 3-3-1 three, three, and one. Uh, last year between these two. The Blues have been the better team this year so far, and the puck dropped by Koharski, and we're underway. Rick Zombo handles it for the Blues. The Baron on the St. Louis end. St. Louis moving left to right, and they dump it back into the Chicago zone. Jeremy Roenick in a starting role for Chicago. Our coach Daryl Sutter, and he swings it ahead, but not out of the zone. Fred Hall will tap it back along the near boards. Suter trying to clear the area for Chicago, and he can't do it. Now Zombo returns the puck into the far corner. Chelios, the Chicago defenseman. Stuff it back behind the Chicago net. Comes to Randy Cunnyworth, who plays the left wing here on Roenick's unit with Graham on the right side. Suter to the right side of the St. Louis end. And Graham trying to get to the puck. He couldn't. He is the captain of the Chicago club. Roenick put it behind the net, and Graham took a big bump from Barron. Out of front of Roenick, though. One-on-one against Joseph. He shoots it. The post bounces wide. Just pulled the trigger a little too quick. The light went on, but it did not go in. Kowarski was right in position. The puck cleared back into Chicago ice. And here goes Chelios returning to take command of it. So Roenick had Joseph one-on-one, -on -one, but as I like to say, Big Ben struck one. He cut the pipe, and he didn't score. Isobart shoots it down to the right-wing corner of the St. Louis zone. Isobart just acquired from Winnipeg. Sneak it back behind the St. Louis goal to Rich Sutter. Turns with a wraparound try. Can't get that by Joseph. And it goes wide. Sutter will try again. He goes behind the net. Looking to pull the trigger, and he can't do it. Great Janney of the Blues slips it on the center. Kevin Miller working one wing. Shanahan on the other for St. Louis right now. And Chicago again pressuring the play back into the Chicago zone. They steer it around to the near corner. Good action so far. Shanahan of the Blues up the left side to Janney. They're still scoreless here. A minute and a half into the contest. Steve Duchesne winds his way back for St. Louis and he comes to the Chicago line, shoots the Lord Bell for He'll deflect it off that goaltender's play. Eisenbar puts it up just under the scoreboard and it bounces up to the St. Louis line on the far side. Jeff Chance will take command of it. Going into the St. Louis end behind the net. One arm that comes around trying to make a play on Joseph. Can't beat him on the short side. He's taken out of the action. And Tom Chilly takes it. We get a holding call, though, against the Blues. St. Louis will be penalized here and they will be shorthanded. Now Murray Barron will get the penalty for holding in front of the Blues net, and Chicago will have their first power play of this game. First power play for them, the first power play of the game. A minute and 50 seconds into this game, and thus far, Chicago has come out, had most of the pressure in the early going of this game, doing a good job forechecking. We talked about their team having more of a talented lineup than they did before, and there's certainly been some personnel changes on the Chicago Blackhawks team. And here are the scratches for the Blues. Alexei Kasatonov is out tonight. He's suspended for one game, getting his second high sticking infraction in Tampa Bay the other night, so he will sit this one out. Basil McCray is out with a rib injury. Philippe Bozon out with a concussion. And Denny Chasse out with the disc problem. And here are the scratches for the Hawks. Brent Sutter with a hip flexor. Robert Dirk with a shoulder. Michelle Goulet with a concussion. Steve Smith out with a broken leg and done until June. Cam Russell, Neil Wilkinson, and Patrick Poulin. Now. And meanwhile, the best chance of the game thus far. What a play by Ronick, just picking up the loose puck, walking in front. Ronick tries to be patient, and with a quick shot, it goes off the post. Now, the red light had gone on on the play, but Ronick showing some patience. Rick Zombo was going after him, pressuring him, and the quick shot by Ronick off the post. The space off will be in the blue zone to the right of Joseph, and it's dropped. Chicago working here on the power play. They are 19th overall in the league at 17.5%. And one of the things with this Chicago power play, they have struggled all season long on the power play. But in the last nine games, they are at a 25% clip. And really, it's because of the new talent that this team has acquired. Joe Murphy of the Hawks now trying to slip it in front to Roenick, and he can't do it as the puck is moved away by the Blues. Blues. 12th in the league in penalty killing at 81.6%. The Hawks again steer it into St. Louis territory. Suter 
Can't get a handle on it. Comes all the way back towards Belfour. And the puck out of action here. Well, the Jeremy Roenick, another terrific season for Roenick. Trying to... He's only five goals short of the 50-goal mark for the third consecutive year. In fact, he's the first Chicago Blackhawk in history to have three consecutive 100-point seasons. He's got 101 points on the year. Roenick uh, stepping out here with a face-off inside the Blues line with Tony Amani. Hold the left wing, Murphy on the right side. The point then will be Chelios and Suter. Penalty killers for the Blues here. Jim Montgomery working out with uh, Brett Hall. The Blues win the faceoff and they dump it to the Chicago zone. To the right of the net, Belfour will set it up for Chelios. No score, first period. A minute 17 now on the penalty to Murray Barron. Blues defenseman who went off. Murray carries a puck into the Blues end. To the right point goes to Chelios. Moves in with a slap shot. Joseph the save on that. Puck bouncing behind the net. Blues chase after it. Murphy around to Tony Amani, the former New York Ranger. Steps up towards the net, trying to make a move, and he can't get the backhander off. <clears throat> to the right point, it comes to Chelios. He'll step up, trying to slip it over to Roney. Intercepted by Brett Hall. Good read by Hall. And he'll shoot it all the way to the net. Blues again. Grab the biscuit, and here's Isabar. Trying to rip it back into the blue zone, and he can't do it. St. Louis stopping to play at the blue line. Kevin Miller with a steal. Short-handed for the Blues. Comes in to try and center it and hit the side of the net. Drop back along the near board. Blues watch Chelios corralled again, but the Hawks are running out of time here. Chelios skating tall, surveys the scene, comes to center ice, and he'll fire it wide of Joseph. It'll come off the near left point to Suter. Gary Suter. Fake a shot. Now drop it over to Chelios to the right point. Snap it towards the net. That's blocked in front and cleared away by the Blues. They apparently have killed the first penalty tonight, Joe. Yeah, and what they have done when we talked about the Blues struggling back a few weeks ago. Their specialty teams had not been very strong. Their power play was not producing. Their penalty killing was weak, and they're much better lately. Brett Hall now brings it back into the Chicago zone. Nedved over to Rick Zombo. Zombo in the left wing circle. Settles in, being chased by Isobar. They put it between the circles now, and Suter will ram that one up the length of the ice. We could get an icing call against Chicago, and we will as Housley will touch up. No score here in the first period, 15.43 left. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Four minutes and 17 seconds of this first period. Curtis Joseph has been the busier of the two goaltenders. Five shots for the Chicago Blackhawks, one for the St. Louis Blues. His, a good save on Chris Chelios. This was on the power play. Chelios was able to walk in from the top of the circle, and Joseph with a fine pad save. Joe, they did uh, review that uh, shot by Ronick on the net that caught the pipe, and the uh, goal judges did, but they uh, did the same thing as Koharski did. They did not allow the goal, and here's a shot by Chance of the uh, Blues net. Rich Sutter is going to go after it in the rebound of the near corner. He can't come up with it, but Carney will. Left point, wrist it towards the goal. Stasny got his body in front, comes back to Carney, and he drills one towards the goal, and it's stopped in front again by Brett Hall. Back to Carney one more time. That's three times. He drops it back in the corner. Now Doug Crossman of the Blues trying to clear it out. Stasny takes a whack at it and does push it onto center ice. Rick Weinrich lost the puck to Hall. Here he comes to the Blues, and it is super. Well, the initial play was Weinrich handling the puck and then losing it. That gave Brett Hall an opportunity. A good job by Nedved on Weinrich and then Brett Hall with the long shot. Now, a good defensive play by Weinrich. He just gets a piece of it and it goes wide and it blues with Bill Housley moving in. Quick puck movement. Stastny will end up with the other play and there's Reinwick again. He makes a good play deflecting it and then it slowly came into Belfour and Belfour was able to make the first save and then again on the rebound on Peter Stastny. Weinrich may have coughed the puck up, but he made two pretty good plays to recover. Yeah, he really yeah. did. That, those, that was certainly the best, the Blues' best flurry here in the early going, but uh, Weinrich doing a good job blocking two shots. Janney at center ice here for the Blues against Roenick. No score, first period, 5-0-2 into the uh, opening frame. And the puck controlled by, Saint Lu by uh, the Hawks now as they set up. Chelios ran up the alley, and he'll find Tony Amani. To Joe Murphy now, and he steps back into the Blues end, stops to the left point, circles, shoot it to the net, and Joseph ramps that with a glove. Leaving the puck for Rick Zombo, the Blues defenseman, and Murphy's all over him like a new pair of shoes. And now the Blues take it away, and it'll come free, and there's a turning shot by Almani, blocked, picked up by Ronick, and he fires that one wide, and stuck by the Blues, that fights. 
Ellis again back to play it. And here's Shanahan with a puck for the Blues. Shanahan Miller and Janney working as a trio, and they just shoot it to the St. Louis goal, and Belfour says, give me that thing. He holds on. Well, the line with Joe Murphy on left wing, along with Tony Amante and Jeremy Roenick, a tremendous amount of speed, yet it's been an adjustment for Joe Murphy. He's been used, used to playing that right side, Mike, being a left-hand shot, being able to come to the middle and let go of the quick shot. But since the trade, bringing Amante over, Murphy has had to switch to left wing, and it's been an adjustment for him. He hasn't felt all that comfortable as of late, and as Brent Sutter, or uh, Daryl Sutter, I should say, was mentioning this morning, that line should be scoring much more than they are with all the talent that they have. Do you think that's the case, really, Joe, of a lot of teams right now at this point after the trading deadline, so many trades and so many new faces, it, it does take about three weeks to a month before they can adjust and get used to one another. Yeah, that's that's a good point. And Daryl Sutter mentioning that he's he's going to stick with that line and give them an opportunity to stay together. The Orchek coming back for, for the Hawks now to move it around the right side. The Blues keep it in, however, and they dump it to the right wing corner. Greg Smith defensively. And he has it for St. Louis around the right side, and they simply clear to center ice. Steve Duchesne paired out here with Tilly. Blues from their own blue line. Duchesne to Tilly here on the near side. He brings it on to center. Oral left couldn't take the pass as it's cut off by Kimball of Chicago, and he drills it back into the blue zone. Duchesne behind the net took a big bump. Minsky put the check on him, and it'll be Kelly Chase now feeding on the backhand ahead of the Chicago line. Blues can't catch up to it, and we get a stop in play here. A two-line pass called as Broca took the pass from Horacek. And now the tempers heat up a little bit as Kelly Chase gets involved for the Blues, and Greg Smith steps in, too. Sticks her up also. Well, that was a hit that some of the Chicago players thought it was a little late right after the whistle had gone. Kelly Chase came together with Horacek and knocked him down. Then Darren Kimball was actually on the other side of the ice. He saw the action and came all the way around before getting involved. We are scoreless here in period number one. The Blues and the Hawks, and this is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Altercation started right after the whistle. Kelly Chase came together with Dubinsky, not Horacek, as I mentioned earlier. And then after that hit, all the players joined together. Kelly Chase was looking at Greg Smith on one side, Kimball on the other, and Dubinsky right in front of him. David Mackey, Prokhorov, and uh, Montgomery working out here for the St. Louis Blues. And here's Carney delivering the puck to the right side, though. Up on the play, it will go to Rutu. Back to Carney, and a wrist shot goes up the uh, body of Curtis Joseph, the Blues goaltender, and up into the seats. Now, Carney was a player that was acquired from the Buffalo Sabres earlier in the season and was recalled when Chicago had their problems on defense. And like you were mentioning earlier, Smith out for the season with a broken leg. He's going to be in a cast until June 1st, and then they lose Cam Russell, who had come on and played very well. And both those players, very physical in their own zone. And with this new-look Chicago team, the one thing the coaches were saying this morning was that they don't want to lose their effectiveness. They want to keep that same type of attitude that they have had in the past being a physical team, but when you've got the, the type of players with this type of talent, you're obviously not going to be quite as physical as you were in the past. And sometimes you have to sacrifice, and that's what uh, I think Chicago's going to have to end up doing here. We get a stop in play on an icing call against the Blues. And see, you got to try and find a happy medium in this league right now, and, and it's it's not an easy chore. And general managers really uh, look over the rosters day by day, trying to figure out how they can balance their team. And you know, they they want size, they want toughness, they want a finesse, they want scoring, they want they want everything <laughs> in every player. They, they want, to, as I would compare, they want a Willie Mays in every position. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough to find, isn't it? Even though it looked like Pittsburgh had that a, a couple of years ago with all those with those back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, they had uh, just about as close as you can get to that particular menu that you were mentioning. Christian Rutu with a face off of the Blues in over to Suter and the right side it goes to Chelios. He floats it in behind Joseph. Still no score here in the first period. The Blues center in front of that. Owsley had it. His pocket uh, picked there for a moment but it uh, poked back to center and Hall is going to deliver it back into the Blues zone. Belfour comes behind the net. Eddie Belfour the Chicago goaltender over to Isabart. Belfour having another good year and it comes to Rutu. Two steps into the blue zone, left it for Eisenbart. He kind of kicks it towards Joseph, and Joseph reaches with a left hand to pull it in and hold on. Now we've got a little flare up here with Chelios and one of the blues on the far side. Mike, I believe that was Peter Nedved, the 
Blues player that we mentioned earlier switched to left wing. He and Chelios got involved on the board just inside the Blues blue line, and that's something that we have seen over the years. We'll continue to see tonight. Chris Chelios in particular will pinch in. He'll put pressure in, take chances offensively, and Chelios is going to get the penalty, and the only penalty for the Blues will have their first power play of the night. We're just seven minutes and about seven and a half minutes into this first period, and Chris Chelios will go off for interference, and the Blues will go on the power play. Chelios sitting down. The interference to call on Chelios, and it gives the Blues the man advantage. And the Blues power play currently ninth in the National Hockey League, just over 20%. Efficiency. Meanwhile, the Chicago Blackhawks, we talked about their power play struggling all year. One thing that has not struggled on this Chicago Blackhawks team has been their penalty killing, second overall in the league. They have been strong in that department all season long. And that really has been a trademark uh, of the Chicago Blackhawks the last four or five years, particularly. Uh, Mike Keenan was there, and they always had strong penalty killing. They took a lot of penalties, but they were able to kill a lot off. And they continue that success. Duchesne, though, in the Blues with a big chance here to maybe take the lead in the first period. Hold to the left side to Stosny. Stosny working on the power play. Shane Hanots here also. You look at the two-point men, Housley and Duchesne, and they really move the puck extremely well. The Hawks do clear, however. And Joseph now spins it over to Housley. Back behind the net. And Joseph will set it up for Duchesne. Back to Housley. Quick pass to center to Hull. Steer it to the left wing. Stosny looking for Hull in front of the net. He has 53 goals on the year. Trying to climb up to get the leaderboard in that department. All is after it in the right side of the Chicago end, but the Hawks there and Weinrich ahead behind the defense. Here's Murphy in a breakaway, shorthanded in. He shoots and a shot. Joe Murphy with a great chance, shorthanded on a breakaway. Back come the Blues. Housley to center circle, and he'll jam it back into the Chicago zone. Around to the left point it goes to Duchesne. Duchesne gave it away to Weinrich. A minute three on the penalty. And tap the head to center now, and it comes to Joe Murphy. Murphy still with a little uh, fuel left here after going on that breakaway, but he falls down. The Blues hurry back, and Janney stepping back into the Chicago zone. To Hall on the left wing. Red Hall to the left point to Duchesne. Right side to Housley. Housley looking back to Duchesne. Center point. He shoots it. Deflected right up the left hand of Belfour. Now Chicago sets it up again, and they have it, and they clear. Well, it was controlled by Suter, and he found the open avenue to fire it into the St. Louis zone. 34 seconds to go. And the penalty to Chris Chelios. Interference the call to him. Still no score. 11 minutes left here in the first period. And Crossman steering the puck into the Chicago zone. Greg Smith going back. He'll get it quickly. He should be able to clear here, and he does. Off the boards and away by Crossman. Blues have time for one quick rush here. Maybe Cunnyworth putting some pressure on uh, Joseph. And the Blues beat it on the center. They can't make anything happen here. The Blues will... That score in this power play. Tilly backpedaling in his own end. Well, the St. Louis Blues and stopping back behind his own net. Moving to the left of the cage. Penalty has expired. And the Blues and Fox have both had a power play chance. And neither one's been able to connect. Rest it up into Chicago ice. Mike Weinrich. Move it over to Dubinsky. And Steve Dubinsky will slip it behind Joseph. He'll backhand it around to the far wing. Up on the plate of Janney. And he sidestep a check there and he carries the mail. Delivers a pass to Kevin Miller. Drop it over to Tilly. He's got a chance and he fires it right off Belfour's stick. Tilly from 45 feet out. Now the Hawks come right back on the counterattack. Chance is going to shoot it. That went off Murray Barron, the Blues defenseman. And Barron makes a nice play, but he can't get it out. Tilly also around to the right point. Shoots it around the horn and the Blues over to capture it. Tilly swings it ahead and Edmund looked for the puck. I don't think he thought he could touch it. Would have been too many men on the ice. And he turned around asking for somebody to help him. And now Koharski looks. Are we going to get too many men on the ice or not? I think he's going to make the call. Koharski yeah. was just to the side of the Blues bench, and Karamnov jumped on the ice and then tried to actually get off the ice on the play, and the Blues were caught with six men on the ice. Okay. Kelly Chase is going to serve the penalty for the Blues. Meanwhile, a great chance for the Chicago Blackhawks shorthanded. They have 13 shorthanded goals on the season. Murphy with his great speed taking the pass from Weinrich right up the middle. And Curtis Joseph, boy, he just outweights Murphy. Murphy's waiting for Joseph to do something. Joseph just stands there, keeps his concentration, and waits for Murphy. Murphy with the shot, and Joseph catches it right in the middle and is able to deflect the puck off to the side. A great shorthanded chance for the Chicago Blackhawks. Now Bob Berry has changed. Kelly Chase comes out of the penalty box. Karamnov 
who was the player that had jumped on the ice and was actually the sixth player on the ice for the Blues, is going to serve the penalty. Well, you knew the Blues were in trouble when you saw Nedved, the puck came towards him, and he turned around and looked and as if to say, do I touch the puck? Or he looked back to say, is somebody else on or not? And he got he just got caught with his hand in a cookie jar. Yeah, Mike, and so many times the officials will let that go if the puck is away from the boards, but the puck just happened to be right in front of the Blues bench. Now our play chance number two for the Chicago Blackhawks. Still scoreless here in the first period. Joe Murphy couldn't get to it, and the Blues come back shorthanded. And it's Shanahan brings it onto the Chicago line, and he pulls the trigger on a heavy slap shot. Belfour denied that. And picked up now by Gary Suter. Suter works the point out here on the left side. Chelios on the right. They've got Murphy, Amani, and Ronick up front. Do the Hawks. And brought into the Blues end at the right point. Here is Chelios. A slap shot, and he missed the goal. Around to the left point. Suter. Throw it softly into the corner. It comes to Ronick. Back door over to Tony Amani of the Hawks. To the left point to Suter. He shoots the puck. Where is it? Stopped by Joseph. The rebound in front. Ronick couldn't get it to Amani, but the whistle sounds. The net's dislodged, and also a Blues player is down. It's Kevin Miller who was down in front of the St. Louis net. There was a lot of traffic in front of the net. The Hawks taking the long shots from the point. They're trying to get their forwards in front. Rick Zombo, the Blues defenseman, Kevin Miller, also came back into the zone, back in front of his net, to try and help out. Miller had trouble controlling it. Ronick ends up making the pass, and then actually it was Miller who hooked Ronick's stick, and his stick came up and caught Kevin Miller in the mouth area. He went down, and now trainer Tom Nash out on the ice. Kevin Miller back on his skates now and making his way to the Blues bench. Seems to be okay. Blues still with a minute and 10 seconds to go on their minor penalty for too many men on the ice. They're still scoreless, and Chicago is uh, uh, shooting St. Louis 11 to 7. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Well, the Blues trying to kill this penalty off. Chicago's uh, working here on this power play, and Suter, the new addition. Uh, we can look for both he and Chelios. They both can fire the puck, and that, that's going to be a strong point for them. Yeah, and even though Suter has struggled until lately, he played his best game for the Chicago Blackhawks last game when they played the Calgary Flames, but prior to that had some trouble uh, adjusting to this new division. Chelios on the right side after the faceoff win by the Hawks, and Chelios fired that with Hall out with a stick to deflect it. Went up into the seats here at the arena. And again, what Chicago is doing on their power plays, at least here in the first two power plays, their defensemen, Chris Chelios on one side, Gary Suter on the other side, they're trying to get the puck to the middle of the ice, and they're taking the long shots, trying to get their forwards to go to the front of the net. Now, this power play unit for Chicago, with Dirk Graham up front, Rutu on one side, those are more physical players, so they'll just go to the front of the net on this, on this unit and let those defensemen take the shots, but the Blues doing a good job deflecting those shots. And the Blues win the faceoff and steer it up into Chicago territory. Here comes Chelios again, rambling up. 50 seconds to go on the Blues penalty. Chelios stymied a bit at his own line on a good check by Brett Hall. Hall's been anticipating reading pretty well here in this penalty killing effort. Chelios now ramps it back into the blue zone. He comes off the left side, around to the left point to Suter. Does he shoot it? He does, and it's wide of the net. Around to the right point, Chelios hauls it in. Put it down the boards, but Hall again right there. Just watching Brett Hall work in this penalty killing unit. He is, as I said, anticipating extremely well. He's reading where the Hawks are going to go with the puck. And Chicago steps up. Final rush up here on this power play. Suter zigzag into the Blues. It falls down. The Blues should be able to get it, and they will. Duchesne has a man open. Here's Miller. He has two men to beat. And Graham cut him off of the pass. Miller falls down between a sandwich check there between Chelios and Graham. Chicago picks up the puck. Only five seconds remain on the St. Louis penalty. And here's Chelios again with a biscuit. Drive it down the boards into the blue zone. Ready to come on. Ram up does, but an icing call here against Chicago. Here at the St. Louis Arena, the St. Louis Blues and Chicago Blackhawks are scoreless. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. You see this Sunday at noon, the Dallas Stars face off against the Blues. Watch NHL Sunday showdowns on ABC. Again, a reminder, that game with the Blues and the Dallas Stars will be a noon starting time this coming Sunday. Peter Stastny on board now for the St. Louis Blues. Got uh, Nedved and Hull out here working with him. Zombo and Barron, the two defensive uh, players for the Blues, and their coach, Bob Barry. Bobby holding up these days. Pretty good. 
Bobby's uh, Bobby's doing well. Uh, this Good. team uh, with the with the changes and he's had to make a lot of lineup changes uh, over the course of the season, but he did such a remarkable job of getting this team together last year for their stretch to make the playoffs and then and then doing well uh, in the playoffs. Uh, he's got a much more talented team though. Amani of the Hawks brings it back and uh, shoots it to the high St. Louis zone and Joseph's going to back it around the boards of the far wing. Peter Nedbed got a handle on it and he simply clears the area. Keith Carney, the Chicago defenseman, blasts that one back in and it goes behind the cage. Well, Zombo and Barron went back in and Zombo elects to take possession of it. It's on to Brett Hall. He looks for Nedbed. Still scoreless here in the first. 7-13 left. Nedbed. Relays it back to Murray Barron and tap it up the board. It'll be by Hall. Belfort's going to play the puck, though. And that uh, waves off any icing. The Blues go in for it in the near corner. Stasny trying to get command of it. Roney uh, beats him to it. And it comes on that far wing. Tony Amani is going to slip it up. But did not hit a Blues player. And it comes the length of the ice. And we will get an icing call here against Chicago with 6.50. Well, there's a break in the action. Uh, to uh, be a great time to break for the great taste of Bud Light. It's a big hit with fans everywhere because it won't fill you up and never lets you down. So make it a butt light. Now well, Peter Stosny was all smiles this morning. His wife and four children arrived in St. Louis last night. His kids are still going to school out in New Jersey, so he hasn't had much of an opportunity to see his family since he joined the Blues, but they came in last night with the Easter break, and they'll be here through Sunday, and he had that big smile on his face. Space off to the right of Belfort. Janney against uh, Jeff Shantz. They finally drop the puck, and Suter takes control of it. Gary Suter, the Chicago defenseman, steps by a check by Kevin Miller. Relay left wing to Dirk Graham, and Graham's going to bounce it in behind the St. Louis goal. Crossman goes back defensively. He had it uh, taken away, and the Blues lose the puck. Around to the left point, it will come to Gary Suter. Suter shoots it back in behind the St. Louis goal. Graham went in. He overskated the play. Janney back trying to clean up his own end. Over to Kevin Miller. And Janney working out here with Brendan Shanahan. Shanahan has the puck on the center to Janney. Back to Shanahan and he throws it to the right wing corner. On the carom. Belfour came out. He read that play. Got to it. But here Shanahan. Oh, the hand of Belfour. He got the puck off the right wing door. Big scram on front of that. Belfour reaches down to grab that puck. And holds on. Boy, you, you don't do a whole lot of games. You let the folks know that Ken Wilson still is on the side watching this building here and it's funny when you come in haven't been in for a while but you know the home team knows its boards and the way it works with it and you could just see they were working a play like that to try and use the boards and it almost resulted in a goal now with Shanahan with the long shot now the puck was on edge it was rolling so it kind of flew on him somewhat and then it came back around the boards and another opportunity for Shanahan trying to deflect the long shot from the left point and Belfour came up with a real fine save on the deflection just saw Brett Hall say the boards that he was talking about the board exactly what he was talking about and this face off will be in the Chicago zone to the left of Belfort Lubinsky against uh, Coral left and the Chicago Blackhawks win the face off again Chelios on the far side and beat it ahead to center ice or a check working one wing here for the Blackhawks and Kimball on the other but the Blues bring it back in and a hard shot from the left side to flex off a stick and into the seats another face off will take place well, we're getting a lot of face off uh, practice here in this first period. Now both teams have done a good job defensively deflecting shots and Chris Chelios with another one there. Meanwhile Phil Housley back in the lineup for the for the Blues. Boy he has had a remarkable recovery. He's been playing nearly 30 minutes a game is not experiencing any trouble at all with that back that he had surgery on. In fact is only on a maintenance program every other day he's doing some light workouts for the lower back and up to this point it has not bothered him at all and he could be a real plus for the Blues as his timing gets better as he gets in better physical shape or game shape as we head to the playoffs. And on the other side of it is Joe too that he's had all this time off he hasn't played a whole season also and he's going to be a little fresher than most people going into the, <clears throat> into the playoffs. Here comes Korolev now carrying the mail for the Blues and he shoots into the net Belfort stopped that or to the head he tried to hit man it to Dubinsky and he's pulled down the penalty coming up here against St. Louis now the gloves off for Chase and Greg Smith back in the Chicago zone they square off and the Lions will step in before they get the full line. The original penalty was going to be issued here against St. Louis and then Smith and Chase squared off and no punches thrown. So we're in the first period St. Louis will be shorthanded 
There is no score, and this is St. Louis Blues hockey. Themselves shorthanded with 5.24 to go in this first period. No score. The initial penalty at the center ice area. Dubinsky was pulled down on the play. Took a nice dive also to help things out. And Igor Korolev goes off for hooking. Then after that particular incident, still inside the Chicago Blackhawks zone, it was Greg Smith and Kelly Chase that actually threw down their gloves, squared, squared off, and were ready to go at it. But linesman Pat Tapuzo jumped in between them before anything could get started. So they both pick up minors for unsportsmanlike conduct. They will sit down also. But Korolev, the important man right here, it puts the Blues shorthanded for the third time in the period. You would think if Chicago is going to have some success in this game, Joe, that they've got to start cashing out these power play chances. Yeah, both, and this is the type of period where we've had so many power plays by both teams that really neither team has been able to get into a real five-on-five -five flow of the game. And that's where in the past we have seen these two teams really get into some physical play, some forechecking. But it's been really a period of power plays. Bonnie and Murphy flank the wings now again for Jeremy Roenick. Chelios and Sudo still the point man. Murphy to the right side to Chelios. Lost the puck to Murray Barron, but can't clear. Joe Murphy around the right side to Chelios. Giving the puck to Tony Amani. Amani with just a goal since joining the uh, Hawks. Around to the left side to Suter. Back center point. It will come to Chelios. Step to the left side. Now moves it in the corner near side for Jeremy Roenick. The Hawks on a power play. Pass to the center point to Chelios. You read that right. They are trying to go to the center point area to try and work from that, uh, that spot. But that pass just avoided Chelios. And what the Blues have done, Mike, recently, their penalty killing has improved because they decide to play a much more conservative style in their own zone. Instead of getting caught out of position, putting too much pressure on, they're playing more of that conservative box and being more patient has been working for them. Suter again trying to keep the puck in. Ronick has lost his helmet. He's down to the puck near his corner now. To Amani, a turning shot, and Joseph made a good save on Tony Amani from 25 feet away. Amani on the right wing boards now in the blue zone, but Helsley picked his pocket and took it away and fires it up ice. Elfor swings in the head to center, trying to get the Blues in a change here. Down the right side, it will come to Suter. Suter moves in to St. Louis Ice. He'll come down deep. Barron got to the pocket. Brett Hall has it one more time for the Blues, and he'll wrist it off the board. That's another advantage that Brett Hall has. He has so much strength in his wrist that he can take that puck from anywhere in his own end and wrist it quickly off the boards. There aren't a whole lot of guys in this league that can do that and do it effectively and move the puck out without somebody stopping it. Here comes... The play to Reinrich at center, and he'll drive it into the St. Louis end. Joseph takes the puck. He'll backhand it away. The St. Louis goaltender to center. Miller's held up from behind, but he gets free, and he gets to the puck. Goes in on goal, but he's knocked down. Penalty coming up here against St. Louis, the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. As Miller had a chance here, but he was tripped at the very last second. Great hustle by Kevin Miller to get to that puck and even make it happen. And the play starts in the blue zone. Curtis Joseph with a great job clearing it right up the middle, and Miller just takes off down the ice. Now he's being... Hooked by the Chicago player on the play, but he just fights right through it. Keith Carney stays after him, finally pulls down Kevin Miller before he can get a shot off. And now the Blues will play four on four for a while. Again, Kevin Miller, just a tremendous effort with Keith Carney hanging all over him, staying with it, keeping the legs going. That's the key here. He doesn't glide. He keeps his legs moving. That forces Carney to pull him down. And so we'll play four on four for the next 18 seconds. Then Igor Korolev will come out of the box, and the Blues will be back on the power play. And here's Chicago sitting here in the first period where they have had 12 shots, three power play chances, and they have nothing to show for it. And uh, those are numbers you like to see a little better, but now it's going to turn around because the Blues, as uh, Joe mentioned to you, are going to have an opportunity here in 18 seconds to work with a man advantage. Peter Nedved. Swings around, circles around to face off here against Christian Rutu in the Chicago zone to the left of goaltender Eddie Belfour. Brett Hall up front with him. And they've got uh, Duchesne and Tilly as the two defensemen. See who Rutu is working with. He's working with Dirk Graham. Face off push by Rutu, and it rolls on edge to the St. Louis zone. Duchesne back to scoop it up. Looking to puck for Tilly. He was double teamed, but two Hawks are trapped. Here come the Blues, and they might have a big chance here. Coming up, five seconds to go on the penalty, too. Duchesne left side to Hull. Comes in and wrists to the net. The stuff made the rebound. They can't put it on Eddie Belfour. And now Chicago with it, and the Blues go to the power play as the penalty is over. Korolev comes on. Janney steps on board. And it'll be Janney working with Nedved and Hull. And they've got Duchesne and Housley as the point men. Nedved. Brings it on to the Chicago zone. Slip it to the left wing board. Still scoreless here in the first period. And Chelios finds that puck. And he'll blast it the other way. Curtis Joseph has to set it up. 
for Phil Housley. A minute 15 to go in the penalty to Keith Carney, the Chicago defenseman. Passing to the right wing, Reggie Sutter working out here as a penalty killer now for the Blues. He is out with Randy Cunningworth. To the left point, Chicago in. Housley right side to Duchesne. He shot it and Sutter blocked that. Janney has it over to Shanahan. A quick shot from 20 feet and stopped by Bill Four from the right wing circle and he holds it long enough for a faceoff. Now well, the thing that Janney does so well, he's got those great hands and that's the one thing the Blues were missing when Janney was out of the lineup before reacquiring him. The initial shot was blocked, but then Janney with the quick hand. Boy, it's just a quick pass to Shanahan right in the slot. Shanahan with the quick wrist shot at Belfour was right there to make the save and then, more importantly, control the rebound and hold on for a whistle. But Janney with those great soft hands put it right on the stick of Shanahan for the quick shot. And Shanahan continues to play even in this game. The last couple of games, he's been in the penalty box a lot, playing with a great deal of intensity. And in this game as well, away from the play, he's getting involved with the Chicago players, getting his stick up, a lot of pushing and shoving. And his intensity level has gone up dramatically in the last three or four games. And you know in the coming playoffs, he will play exactly like that. He is one of the best playoff players I've seen over the years, Brendan Shanahan. Well, he's got that great size, and with all the skill, he can really dominate a game when he puts his mind to it. Ronick and Shanahan. Shanahan won the face off to Housley. He fakes a shot, skating uh, over to the center point now. He shot off on the left side to do Shane to the Blues. Back to Housley. Shoots it off the post. And comes back underneath the uh, four now. Scoots free and put in by Shanahan on the rebound. The Blues have scored. Brandon Shanahan got it by Eddie Belfour. Well, Shanahan stayed with it. The key is, is that Shanahan wins the face off, first of all, on their own end. The Blues are going to control it with Housley. Housley will end up taking a shot that hits the post. Now, who's in front? Brendan Shanahan. He screens Belfour. Belfour doesn't see it. The puck comes straight out. Now, Janney goes to the front of the net. And what a play by Janney, poking the puck off the stick of Gary Suter. It goes right back to the side of the net. Shanahan goes right to the puck. And before Belfour can get back in the net, there's Shanahan to just jam it in the empty side. Chelios also there to help out, but Shanahan started the play with the faceoff, went to the front of the net to screen the play, and then Janney came in with the perfect poke check on Gary Suter, who was handling the puck, and again, there was Shanahan right on the puck. He puts it into the net and gives the Blues a 1-0 lead. Goal number 44 on the year for Shanahan, and a power play goal at 17-30, and St. Louis takes the lead here against the Hawks. And Shanahan connecting here. Suter with the puck now for Chicago. Off to Chelios. Chelios ripping down the near boards. That's twice in this period. The goal judge has had a quick trigger. He turned the light on down on an earlier play in the St. Louis end and also did it in Chicago uh, territory on that play. And eventually, when he did turn it on the second time, it was for real. They wanted to even things up. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Cunningworth. Might have switched ends during the period. During the period. Here's Cunningworth coming around. We're in the puck down to the St. Louis zone. And Zombo returning to get it. I think we will have... Uh, an icing call against Chicago with a minute 47 left here in this period. Housley and Duchesne, they've given the assist to, but Janney was the guy that made it. Here are the upcoming home games on the slate. Thursday the 7th, Los Angeles in town. Sunday the 10th, Dallas at noon. And Thursday the 14th, the Winnipeg Jets will be here. Fan appreciation now. You know, Mike, I, I don't know how it is in your division, but what I've seen happen in the last week and a half or two is that most of these teams in the in the in their divisions are playing divisional games. And if you talk about a way to get ready for the playoffs, it's to play your teams in your own division. We've seen some great intensity in Detroit Sunday afternoon. Here again tonight, these two teams get ready. I don't think there's a better way to prepare for the playoffs than playing teams within your division. And I think it's pretty uh, commonplace because everybody's been now restricted the last uh, week, week and a half. The travel's going to be cut down, and you're going to be playing your division teams. And of course, somebody real close that uh, is involved, and, and that's the way it'll be. And then you'll get to the playoffs, and you'll hear a whole different tune. Well, we've, we've played 84, but now we're going to start a whole new season. <laughs> Center. Here's Sutter clearing a puck into the left wing corner of the blue zone. And Duchesne with a minute 20 to go. Swing it around to the far side. Rutu cuts it off of the Chicago Blackhawks. He spins it around the horn. And Kevin Miller of the Blues took a big bump there from Sutter. And the Blues still have possession. Isabar tried to wrist it to the net. Couldn't get it through. And a steal. Here comes Shanahan. He just scored. Shanahan to the Chicago and Good pass to Miller. Here he comes. And his quick shot stopped by Bill for a rebound. Janey for the trigger. That missed penalty coming up here against the Blackhawks again. He'll be short-handed here with exactly one minute to go in period number one. 
Now another great chance for the Blues, and it all started right at their own blue line. Janney ends up with a perfect play. He just drops the puck. Ivan dropping the defenseman with, went with Janney, and he just left it to Shanahan, who then gives Kevin Miller, who came in late, he used his speed to just take off and get into the play. Shanahan fed him perfectly. He's pulled down after getting the shot. And then Janney with an opportunity as well just shoots it wide. But Miller, again, using his speed and his legs to just drive to the net, gets one shot. And then Janney ended up with the other one and just fired it wide on the short side. Ruffing's the call against Rutu. A strange call there when you've got the play coming back as fast as it was to get called on a roughing minor, but uh, that is what is issued by Koharski, the referee. And nonetheless, Chicago shorthand of the Blues who capitalized to take the one goal lead on the power play, set it up again. Duchesne trying to wrist it to the net, and Chelios blocked that. Buck out of action on the uh, announced assist, Joe, on the goal. They gave the assist to Housley and Duchesne, but it looked to me and, and you too that uh, Janney was the guy that directed yeah, it back. Yeah, I think, I think they'll change it. It yeah. was Janney who really made the play because Suter had good control of the puck. Meanwhile, the Blues have made a change on their power play unit. Most of the season, they have been last in the league on the road on the power play. So what they decided to do was try Peter Stosny in there at center with Shanahan up front along with Brett Hall. That's now their first power play unit. Roney gets the assignment here in the faceoff in the Chicago end against Stosny. Stosny winning the draw back to the left point to Hall. He'll go right side to Housley. The pass just beyond his reach. He'll go over and get it now. Slip it into the near corner. Shanahan reaches in. He can't get it. Chelios took it away. Fox belted it around the boards, but not out of the zone. Duchesne helped keep it alive. Back behind the net to Shanahan. All cruising towards the net. He can't go to him. On the left point, Duchesne pinched in, but he couldn't get to the puck, and the Hawks steer it onto the St. Louis line. Housley with it. Looking for Duchesne with 28 seconds to go in the period. Hawks will be shorthanded the rest of the way. We'll go by that clock, and they put it between the circles, and Suter had it, but he couldn't get it out. Now Brett Hall off the left side. Hall looking, going to the right side. Housley, he moves in. Housley, left side. Duchesne's there. His wrist shot and fell for the save and cleared by Roney. There was a play there where Suter did not get the puck out. It almost resulted in a St. Louis goal. Seven seconds left in the period. Duchesne to Housley. Time's going to run out, barring a miracle shot here with the Blues leading 1-0. And that is the end of the first period. And the only goal of the opening 20 minutes went to Brandon Shanahan. And the Blues lead 1-0. Coming up in the intermission, Bruce Affleck will visit with Steve Duchesne, the Blues defenseman. And this is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Back the month of March and kind of look at the highlight reel, the best of what happened to the St. Louis Blues during the month of March. Off to the far side to Derek King. Left point, Tom Kervis. His shot was saved. And the rebound to Montgomery ahead to home. He's got a breakaway. All over the blue line. Hall on the forehand. Two seats go. A short-handed breakaway goal for Brett Hall. The 400th goal of his NHL career. And then in the corner gets the puck. Behind the net to Hall. Out in front. A shot. He scores. Duchesne at the far point behind the net. Scores Shanahan, not a net bet. Back to the point. Duchesne, he shoots, he scores. Net bet, another assist. Duchesne blasts another one home. Here's Brown teeing it up a shot. Save, rebound. The bait can't clear. Brown makes a shot over to Duchesne. And he scores. Steve Duchesne. Dom boost to the net. Drop pass. Boost from Bellows, tip wide, up the far wing, Karamnov, into the Montreal end, Karamnov to the corner, behind the net, bumped by Fogarty, comes to the near side, Karamnov down to the slot, Karamnov moves in front, shoots, by save by Wah! He clears it up to Shanahan, down to Bozon, on to Nedved, over the line. Nedved, a shot right on the save, rebound, Shanahan scores! On the board, Rutu battles with Hall. Shanahan to Duchesne, right point, Brown, a shot, oh, great save. Shanahan centers, Hall scores, Hall scores. Up the middle to Miller, he does a nice job to get the pass, hits the lines, but it comes to Shanahan, a shot, oh, Belfour way out. Shanahan from the corner, a shot, a save, and then a shot. Belfour stops that, Brown the drive, he scores, oh, baby, Jeff Brown, and the Blues tie it in two. 33 seconds remaining, they win the draw to Hall, Hall shoots, save, Duchesne shoots, 
Four clears it up the boards to Chelios. Now it goes one that you've got not only a small ice surface, but a slow one. It's center. Oh, it's gone. Stasny. Stasny. Oh, what a big win. Bedbed spun down. The puck to Muni. Near his net. He works to the far side. Can't clear. Duquesne. Wrist shot. Knocked down in front by Smelling. Stasny. To Nedved. Stop. Rebound. He scores. Peter Nedved. A little problem because it's when the Blues have to play in their end. Duchesne. And over it on that side. Wall holds it in center, shot safely by Andy Moe, rebound to Hull, foot trick, and he scores! And that's a look at the month of March, and hopefully we'll have a chance to show you the best of April as we play into May in the playoffs. So all our score after one period of play is 1-0. Six go. shots on goal, and continued to be his physical presence that we have seen as of late. He has been all over the puck playing physical, playing with a mean streak tonight, and he dominated the first period for the Blues. Out of town, Florida leads Quebec 3-1 in the uh, first period at Quebec. The Panthers trying to get a playoff spot for the first time in their history. The Capitals lead the Islanders 1-0 period number two, and Toronto has jumped on top of Dallas 1-0 at Dallas. That's an important game for uh, Blues fans to keep an eye on, Joe. Yeah, it really is, and Toronto has not been playing well as of late. They have struggled. They lost in Anaheim 3-1 a couple of days ago and simply did not play very well. And Dallas, of course, still trying. They're tied with Toronto right now, still trying to catch Detroit. They're just four points behind the Red Wings for the division lead. Joe Micheletti, Mike Lang, who uh, uh, working here for Kenny Wilson, who's on assignment tonight. So we hope you're enjoying uh, tonight's simulcast here from the St. Louis Arena in Housley. Brings it up here, working on the power play to begin number two. Blues moving right to left, and they move into the Chicago end to the right side to Shanahan. He'll stuff it back behind the Blues goal. Chelios is right there, two-time Norris Trophy winner, and over to Graham, and he'll belt it up into the Blue zone. Joseph hurries it ahead to Housley, and here come the Blues to the Chicago line. Cunningworth denies him a, a spot to come in, and Duchesne and Housley now set up. And Bob Berry has made an early change now. He has Shanahan up with, or I should say Janney with Hull and Shanahan on the first power play. Janney to Hull, and a wrist shot right on him. Belfort will make that stop from 25 on... Red Hall directed back into the near corner. Janney swinging around the hall. To Janney again behind the net. Chelios bumped him. He let the puck go. It comes around near side to Shanahan over to Hall. Push it towards the net. It was blocked by Suter. And Janney goes to Hall again between the circles. Can't tee it up. And the Hawks have it and they kill the penalty. It's over. Route two comes on. Joseph will leave the puck for Phil Housley. Wrist to the head. Nedved trying to get command of it. Ian Stosny working out here. Stosny to the Chicago zone. Tied up on the far boards. He can't find the puck, and the Blues lose it to Rutu. Four-man rush to the Blues in. Right side, Tony Amani in front. Got a man there. Carney shoots and scores. Carney gets the goal for the Hawks, and it's tied at one. And a four-man rush into the Blues in. Well, it was a turnover in the neutral zone, and Chicago countered very quickly. Stastny was there. The puck was just inside the line, and Chicago came back with four players. Now, Carney, the defenseman, will move up, and this is a four-on-two, and the perfect pass from Tony Amade to Carney breaking down the left side, and Carney, without stopping the puck, just redirects it high into the net past Joseph. A beautiful passing play by the Blackhawks, countering at their own blue line to tie the game at one apiece. The goal at 125. Carney is third of the year. Rutu and Amade will assist. And the Hawks come back on a misplayed puck at the Chicago line by St. Louis, and they cash in, and they now have tied the game. Joseph has to settle it behind his own net. And the Blues Zombo looks for Nedved, but he gave it away to Roenick. Roenick to Chicago, moving to the right wing corner of the Blues in. Swing it back, right point, Weinrich, left side. They get it over to Carney. Whip it around the net. Roenick's right there. He doesn't shoot it. Goes to Omani. Fires it, and it's off the arm of Curtis Joseph. And the Blues haul it in. Nedved, Stasny, and Miller, they were out on the last goal, and they stay out, and the Blues almost gave up a, a second goal as the Hawks had a good chance again. Kevin Miller couldn't find uh, the puck to shoot it into the Chicago zone. Nedved now looks for it, finds Miller, and he'll backhand it away to the Hawks in. Belfort will set the play up for Carney, and a 1-1 tie here early in period number two. Carney's pass to the left wing. Out come the Blues. Cunningworth finds Graham, and he'll wrist it up to the... St. Louis zone, Chance off the right wing corner. The Cunningworth behind the net, they set it up. Graham can't get in to get to the puck. Chance will, and he shot it on a wrist shot block. Cunningworth's got it, a slap shot blocked by Tilly. 
And it hops all the way back to center. And Chicago's had the upper edge here early in period number two. Played almost three minutes, and Duchesne back to capture it. Around the right side to his defense partner, Tilly, and here come the Blues trying to get it going. Rokarov comes into the Chicago in. He'll shoot it to the near corner. Up in it on the play was Montgomery. And uh, the Blues now, David Mackey around to the far wing. In Chicago ice to Tilly. Back they go, and Rokarov can't get to it. It comes to Tilly right point, and he'll shoot it. That one sails wide of the cage. And the Blues, Dirk Graham, tried to deflect it out. He couldn't do it. St. Louis with good pressure now. They set it up for Housley in the slot on a wrist shot. That was blocked by Chicago. Mackey comes in. Ropa putting pressure on him, but Mackey avoids that check, comes off the right wing boards, turns to shoot it towards the net, never got to the cage. Mackey again push it back in behind the goal. This is a good shift. Bob Berry's got to be pleased because the Hawks had the advantage. You put this line out, and they took the play away a little bit against Chicago. Mackey again left wing corner, trying to put it to the net, and he does, and Belfort realizing his people on the ice are very tired, and he grabs that puck and holds on. Mackey gets involved now with Graham. As a, a little pushing and shoving go on after the whistle. All right, here at the arena in St. Louis, Chicago has tied the game. We're all knotted up at one apiece. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Closer than you think. Yeah, we all know that right now. And tickets uh, for the first round games with the Blues opponent still to be determined are now on sale. Stop by any of the Blues ticket outlets for your seat to the 94 playoff action. This face off in the Chicago end. Back outside the line and Kelly Chase going to ram it into the zone. An offside call here against the uh, St. Louis Blues. Blues have Chase working right wing here. Coral left. Coral left at center ice and uh, up on the uh, left wing here in this unit. And Bob Berry was finally to get, finally able to get the Montgomery line with Mackey on one side and Prokhorov on the other side. We talked about that first period filled with penalties. Both teams getting numerous power play opportunities. So that meant that the Blues' third line, Prokhorov, Montgomery, and Mackey did not see much action. But here in the early going, after Chicago had a good start to this period, that line came out and gave the Blues a lift. Chelios after the draw. Now it comes to center red, and he'll snap it to the uh, Blues end. Kimball trying to find possession of it. Does swing it around to the near corner. Ramoff can't uh, clear the area. And the, the Hawks now keep putting pressure on. Dubinsky fighting for it. He goes behind the net. Norcheck can't uh, get to it. He has to chase it down to the far corner. Back to Dubinsky who turns to center. Housley had to come off his plate. Korolev picks up the mail and he'll come to center ice for the Blues. He'll shoot the puck in. Belfort with a cautious eye. Comes out. Steps out. Backhands it away around to the near corner. Chase took a bump from Horacek and the Blues now reach in trying to get command of it. They can't do it. Kelly Chase gets to the puck though and he turns to shoot it. Hit a leg. Comes off. Korolev trying to get back towards the net and it comes off him outside the line and carried back in by the Blues and we get an offside call. Yeah, Ricky Zombo, the Blues hardworking defenseman. He is put together another solid season for this Blues team. You look at his, his statistics and they certainly wouldn't indicate that but a player that has been very consistent all season long kills penalties and on the regular shift as well gives you everything he's got every night and he was talking about the game in Detroit on Sunday afternoon this morning and mentioning that was just like old time hockey. I mean it was they really let both teams play probably a little bit too much. We saw a lot of High sticking and cross checking and that that type of thing. And it's been a while since this team has seen that type of a game. Weinrich trying to avoid people and he does come on to center ice to the right side of Jeremy Roney. Roney took a big butt there from Murray Barron who put the body into him. Bounces off that check still trying to battle for it but Nedved gets it for the Blues and he'll swing it on to center ice. Weinrich again wearing a protective uh, mask a broken jaw comes to Roney. Into the Blues end, slip it towards a goal, a 1-1 tie here in the first period. Rolling took a big butt for Barron again. Amani, though, swings free, goes in the slot, forgot one thing, though, the puck. Barron sweeps it away to the far corner. Amani sets it up for Ronick and it's deflected by Nedved. Weinrich, though, steers it back into the corner. And the Blues have it, and they feed it right wing to Brett Hall. Out to Nedved, flying through, coming to the Chicago, and a drop pass for Stastny. That's beyond his reach, Nedved going for it again. Then Stastny, and he turns to center it. It's intercepted by the Chicago Blackhawks. Amani Murphy working out here. Chance also. Brett Hall with it. Shoots it. Deflected by Nedved and just offline. One of the Blues. Stosny got knocked down in front of the goal. Got some tired bodies out here right now for the Hawks. Here's Duchesne taking the puck and he'll blast it back in. Nedved around the far boards. It comes in front. Carney trying to slip it ahead and it comes off the left wing to Murphy. And he rolls it over now to the St. Louis line. Tilly with the puck. 
Swing it back into the Hawk zone. Weinrich can't get a handle on it. A chance now right to his own net. Uh, and goaltender Pelfer when it comes to Carney, and he's going to shoot it all the way up into the St. Louis territory. And after it'll be Duchesne and he'll touch it. And Chicago just wanted to make a change there. 13.51 to go in period number two. Chicago and St. Louis tied at one. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. We see in Blues Blackhawks game, there's some, generally some good hitting. This time Murray Barron gets together with Jeremy Roenick in the Blues end. For 170 pounds, Roenick takes a hit as well as anybody, I think, in the league, and he bounces off of it. He is not deterred by that factor, and he is a gutsy little player. In fact, he probably throws out more checks than he takes. He <laughs> I was, was going to say, he gives them pretty well, <laughs> yes, too. Yes, he does. And wristed back into the uh, St. Louis Inn, and right behind the cage, it'll be Steve Duchesne working the puck over to Tilly with 13.35 to go in period number two. The Blues and Hawks are tied at one. Janney looks for an open space, and he gets to center red and shoots it in. Belfour is going to stumble a bit out of the net, but he has the puck with that blade. Sweep it around the far boards to the right point. Tilly, though, with a slap shot. It never got to the net. It was blocked in front. Still loose, though. And the Hawks come away with it on a four-man, five-man break down the center. Two, three, hot our Blues are trapped back, and here comes Chance. Bob Tichelio shoot it towards the net. Deflected. How's the other man wide open? Shanahan. He'll come down the right wing. Moving in. Chelios after him. Shanahan fakes a shot. Now let's go. One St. Louis. What a play by Shanahan. And the reason Shanahan was wide open in the center ice area is that he was knocked down in front of the Hawks' net. He was late coming back, and the Hawks were actually able to break up with five players. Chelios will end up trying to move it in, and what a play by Housley knocking the puck down and then quickly moving it to Shanahan. Now Shanahan coming down the wing will fake the shot. He'll get Belfort to freeze and then step to the outside where he's got the open side. Boy, that's a fantastic goal by Brendan Shanahan. Reminds me of the playoffs last year when the Blues had so much success going off to the side of the net with Eddie Belfour, and that time he came out, Shanahan with the great fake, gets him to freeze, and then just step, takes one step to the side and puts it in the empty net. The Blues regain the lead. It's now 2-1 St. Louis. And David Mackey's going to swing it back into the uh, Chicago zone up the right wing corner. Blues unable to uh, keep it in as Dropen now fires it ahead by Rich Sutter and on the center circle. Housley takes possession of it to Crossman. Shanahan with a pair of goals. It's 45th of the year. Housley will assist on it. And the goal is 657 of period number two. We're going to stop and play a penalty coming up here. It's going to be against the Blues. Yeah, Vitaly Prokhorov will get the will get the call. A good defensive play by Chicago, just stopping the puck in the neutral zone, and Prokhorov, just trying to defend against his player, just ends up taking him down. That's Paul Eisenbart who goes down, and Chicago will go on the power play. Meanwhile, this shot again by Shanahan. What a play. I mean, everyone in the building thought he was going to shoot, including me, and he just stopped his stick right at the last minute and was able to take one step to his right, and that allowed him to just slip the puck into the lane as Belfour had gone down, and Shanahan continues to play terrific hockey here tonight. You know, if you're Belfour, you're thinking, okay, I know how hard this guy can shoot yeah. the puck, and you yeah. know, you're going to try and cover the angle on him, and you think, okay, this is a move I'll make, and, and uh, Shanahan showed us a little finesse there, not only with the big size that he has, but he just stopped in stride and then whipped it by. Is it a tripping call? I think that is the call, and the, uh, it's interference against uh, the Blues, and the power play on now for the Chicago Blackhawks. They set it up. Roenick over to uh, Suter, and he'll put it in the slot to Murphy. He sets it up and tries to drill it. It was blocked by the Blues, but not out. Chelios left side. Here's Suter taking the puck, and he fires it right on, and Joseph will make that stick save. Roenick bumping into Shanahan. They collide. Right back in behind the St. Louis cage, and centered out, but the Blues, Kevin Miller has it. And he'll wrist it the length of the ice as Belfour has to step 20 feet out of the net. Tap it ahead to Tony Amani. Amani going to Chelios with a full head of steam. Breaking down the left wing into the blue zone. Chelios of Chicago left it for Murphy. And a whack bear with a stick. Got away with one there. Back it comes to Housley, though. And Housley shorthanded a headman pass. Here's Hall behind the defense. Coming in on goal. And Belfort turns, looks, shoots. And Belfort stops him as he went down. Hall had him out, but he made the stop in the last second. Big save by Eddie Belfort and Brett Hall. The breakaway chance. Here come the Hawks again. Down the right wing. Suter's going to take it into the St. Louis end. Off the near side to Amani. Back to Suter. 25 feet from the net. Around to Eisenbart. He can't jam it in. 
Set up in front for Roenick when he has trouble getting to it and Tilly clears for the Blues. And a great defensive play by Tom Tilly sliding to, bl to block the first pass in front of goaltender Curtis Joseph and then getting back on his feet going to the other side of the net and intercepting the pass before clearing it. 10.50 left in the second period. 2-1 St. Louis. Here come the Hawks again. 28 seconds to go. Eisenbart's up in it and knocked off his gauge, but Rutu takes possession. Rutu and the Hawks back behind the St. Louis net. Whelan Deal, where's he going to go with it? Comes out to the near side. Tilly knocked it away off his stick, but not out. Rutu gets it back. Number 22 to the right point. He'll go to Carney. Carney has the only Chicago tally. Put it behind the net. Rutu had it chopped away by Duchesne. Now Carney in on the play. Goes deep behind the net to Rutu. Out to Eisenbart. A wrist shot, and Joseph made a good save on him. Carney on the rebound has it for Chicago. Being pressured by Shanahan and Miller. The penalty is over. The Blues are at full strength. And here's Duchesne slipping the puck around behind his own net. But the Hawks steal on Dirk Graham at full strength right now. Both clubs. Graham off to Rutu. Rutu has the puck. Right wing circle. Trying to pull it around Tilly. Turns with a backhand move. Look for Eisenberg. Went by him. And now Graham in front for Rutu. And it went by his stick. He's tired. Rutu still battling for it. Centers it. And Shanahan's going to get it. He tries to drive it out on the backhand, and he will. Everybody wants to get off. Well, Tom Tilly was really stuck out there on the ice. That's the reason Chicago was able to control it, even after the Blues were back to even strength. Tilly was just exhausted and was just waiting for his opportunity to get off the ice. Barron has to go back for it again on the St. Louis end. And Murray Barron, the Blues defenseman, looking for net net, a collision between Cunningworth and Barron. They're both down to the Blues zone. But lifted by St. Louis all the way to the Chicago right wing corner. And the Karen behind the net. Ran by Greg Smith and icing the call here against the St. Louis Blues. We're down to 9.23. So Shanahan's been the man of the hour for the Blues tonight with a couple of goals. We mentioned uh, uh, Joe did that he had six shots in the first period. Now, and the Blues did a good job defensively during this shorthanded situation. First of all, Paul Eisenbach trying to split the two defense. Tilly was there along with Steve Duchesne, and it was that defensive tandem that got stuck out there for a long time. Meanwhile, Brett Hull, a, a shorthanded chance. Well, he fakes the shot. Belfour will go down, but Belfour's arms, he keeps him up in the air, and Brett Hull tries to get the puck up and over the arms, but Belfour just reaching up with the arms is able to stop the shorthanded breakaway attempt by Brett Hull. Ropa from the left point, a shot deflected on the way in by Dubinsky, and that was uh, offline. And the Blues, Nedved, trying to get it out of danger. A penalty coming up here. Nedved knocked down Greg Smith. And Peter Nedved is headed to the penalty box. We'll be back. The Blues have the lead over the Blackhawks, but Chicago goes on the power play again. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. The Blackhawks will go back on the power play. Peter Nedved goes off. The play was in the blue zone, and Nedved just with the stick. Pulls down one of the Hawks player, Greg Smith, and Nedved goes off, and the Hawks go back on the power play. Chicago on their power play. This is chance number five unofficially that I have for them, and they have uh, 62 power play goals on the year. They really rely on Jeremy Roenick. He has 23 of the 62 power play goals. Yeah, and his 23 power play goals, at an all-time uh, Chicago Blackhawks record for power play goals in the season. Here is Amani from the faceoff, and he shoots it right to the net and stopped by goaltender Curtis Joseph. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. In the heat of the night, weeknights at 11 on St. Louis 11. We talked about the changes this Chicago Blackhawks team have made. They have added some skilled players. One of them, Tony Amante, who took the last shot for Chicago. He's from the he's from the state of Massachusetts. Went to Boston University, and here's Joe Murphy off the right side. I think they got to get him going on the power play. Joe Murphy he was a big part of their uh, attack last year, and he really has only seven this whole season long. Here's Kevin Miller with a puck over the Blues, and he shoots it ahead to kill some valuable time to take the heat out of a hot kitchen right now. Chicago trying to tie the game, and it's 2-1 St. Louis. Hawks again start back into St. Louis ice. Roney couldn't get to the puck. He does now in the near corner as he was set up. They go to the right point area, stolen by Housley, and beat it ahead back towards the Chicago net. And now Bob Barry has made another change. He has Phil Housley playing the forward position, killing this penalty. And Housley has had some experience at that position. He did that same type of thing while playing in Buffalo. Murphy on the left side gets the puck over to Jeremy Roenick. Still in St. Louis ice now as they set up. 
Ronick off the left wing boards. Graham's down deep. He doesn't go that way. Went cross rink over to Chelios. He was double teamed, but they find Murphy. Now to Ronick and a quick shot blocked on the way to the goal. Sambo did a good job of getting in front of Jeremy Ronick. Duchesne from behind the cage. Shoots the puck off the boards, and away it goes. And a bouncing puck comes all the way to the Chicago end with only 40 seconds left on the Nedved penalty. And Suter slowly rounds behind his own goal, comes up for the Blackhawks, steps to center circle. Five-man break to the Blues line, and he shoots it down the right side. After it will be Isabard of Chicago to the right point to Rutu. He'll tap the puck over to Weinrich at the left point. Getting it over to Dirk Graham, but he lost it. And the Blues, Shanahan rifles that one. It was actually a shot. It went over the head of Belfour from 110 feet away. Talk about strength. Shanahan just blasted that one all the way over the head of Belfour off the glass. Hawks up in the final rush. Seven seconds to go on the penalty. Down the right wing to Eisenbar. Cuts inside and a wrist shot. Blocked again by Barron. Loose around the net. Joseph scrambles. He knocked the puck away. And the Blues beat it around to the right point. Penalty is over. The Blues are at equal strength. The Hawks still have the puck in the St. Louis end. Right side, Graham. Graham put it in behind on that. Root two. Challenge on the play. It goes back to Graham. Graham to the right point. And Weinrich comes over to take it for Chicago. Eric Weinrich down the near wing. And it's stolen by Tilly. And he's going to wrap it down the near side into Chicago ice. Blues will be called for icing. But they'll take that call. They killed the penalty. And they now will get the face off on their own end. And they're uh, back to normal, if you will, here. After killing uh, penalty number five of the night. Mike, you talked about some of the Chicago players being rested. One of those players, Eric Weinrich, who is wearing a face shield. He broke his jaw against the Winnipeg Jets about six weeks ago, and he just returned to the lineup his second game back, actually, after missing 17 games. And you know what the amazing thing was? He had his jaw wired, and that means you can't open your mouth to eat. And generally, when, you, when players go through that type of thing, they lose... 10, 15 pounds easily. Weinrich only lost four pounds during his absence, so now he comes back still with plenty of energy. Well, that tells me he doesn't have a whole lot of uh, body fat there. <laughs> yeah. Pretty low count. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Cunningworth on the left wing uh, side of the St. Louis in, and Brent Hall gets to the puck. He'll slap it around the horn. It looks for it. Cut back into the corner and turns now and slips it over to Peter Stasty as lineman here. Nedved took a big check from Richie Sutter. Moved on to center and the Blues get it to Hall on the right wing and he'll throw it into the Chicago end. Nedved goes to the corner trying to center it back for Stasty. That's not going to connect and Chicago's content just to tap it on the center. And the Blues. Just dish it in behind the net. Weinrich now in the Chicago zone. He and McCarney up on the right wing. It will be delivered over to Dubinsky. He'll find a Cunnyworth, the backhand, the top opportunity from the right wing circle. Denied by Joseph. And here are the Blues on the counterattack. Stassi just slips it ahead. Belfour is going to come out of the net. Play it off the window and up to center ice where Duchesne has to go back and capture it. 5.45 left in the second period. St. Louis 2 and Chicago 1. F. Shantz, rookie, breaking into the blues in on the right side of Isabar, a wrist shot, and Joseph denied that with a stick as he stopped it from 35 on Paul Isabar. Times tonight, Chicago has, has come up in four or five man rushes into the blues in, and blues almost look like they're, they're just stuck, and here's Danny with it, but other times the blues have had a big advantage. Duchesne right side to Danny, Danny from the center for McGilmore. And it's knocked aside by Smith, and on the center ice it will come. Blues. Watch the Hawks come into the zone. Horacek can't get uh, to the net. Zombo may have been hurt on that shot by Horacek. It hit him in the leg, and he's slow in coming back. Out of his own end. The left side of David Mackey, and he'll blast one right to the net. And Belfour has possession of that, the Chicago goaltender. We are in the second period. The Blues lead the Hawks 2-1. to one. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. He is such an outstanding passer that he gets criticized for being unselfish at times. And this is one of those plays. Steve Duchesne moves in, and Belfour way out of the net. Jenny had the wide open side instead of shooting, tries to make the pass through the slot area again, and Chicago was able to get control of the puck and go back the other way. Left point, Shanahan looking for the HT. He's got both St. Louis goals tonight. Can't shoot it on this occasion, so he drops it back in behind the goal to Craig Janney. Janney in front, and it comes right off Belfort, but he smothers that one before it slips by. Well, Janney got behind the net, and he worked uh, the puck out in front, but Belfort able to scoop it up. Well, you talk about Shanahan. He's been terrific against the Chicago Blackhawks. Counting this game now, in 19 regular season games, Shanahan has 28 points on 17 goals 
and 11 assists. And if you go back to earlier in the season, back on December 26, the Blues and the Blackhawks played right here at the arena. The Blues beat the Blackhawks 3-2 in that game. Brendan Shanahan had all three goals. This face off grabbed now by the Blues and or the uh, Blackhawks, I beg your pardon. And Chelios out to center now to Roney. He'll come up and drop it to the right wing corner with a St. Louis in. Murray Berry defensively back to take it. Runs <clears throat> into Joe Murphy, the Hawks will center, and it came off Tony Amani's leg around to Housley, and he'll just wind it ahead back to the neutral zone. Suter back pedal into the Chicago zone, paired out here with Chelios, gives it to the Hawks defenseman. Now to Amani and up to center ice to Joe Murphy. Streaks into the Blues in around to Roney. Roney avoids a man, turns and shoots it, but he missed the net. Falling down from the left wing circle. Around the right wing board. This game just has gone back and forth, and really it just appears that it's up for grabs right now. The Blues have the lead two to one, but at times the Blues look like the stronger team, and then Chicago comes back and takes the, the attack back, and that, it has been swinging back and forth. Yeah, it really has. Meanwhile, Craig Janney with an assist on Brendan Shanahan's first goal. It was initially credited to Steve Duchesne, but Janney clearly with the assist on the play, now his 500th NHL point. Boy, he is. Really putting together some kind of a career. A very quiet 100-point scorer in the National Hockey League. Well, there is a deal that worked out well for both clubs. That yeah, really did. Well. Yep, yeah, really. really I mean, did. That's that the was... kind of trade that every GM would like to make. You yeah. know, one that helps your club and uh, one that helped the other one, too. Yeah, the Blues were dealing from a position of strength, having three offensive defensemen. And all season long, they had been trying to make a deal to acquire another centerman with, with Janney being their really their only real uh, centerman. They needed number two and number three, and now they've got three of them. Here to the left side of the <coughs> St. Louis in a shot by Cunningworth stopped by Curtis Joseph. Hawks trying to put some pressure on. Tilly won't let that happen, and Tilly scoots on to center. Karamov now trying to get into the Chicago end. He runs right into Cunningworth. Picked up, though, by Chase, and a wrist shot right on, and that's Belfour making the save on Kelly Chase. Breaks out with Greg Smith and Chase back in behind the Chicago net. Greg Smith and Kelly Chase both trying to get their arms free to throw punches. And Boharski directing traffic, telling everybody, get away from here. And let the heavyweights go, and uh, we don't want you around. Now the glove comes off from Smith. Now this is something that could have happened easily in the first period, and it sure didn't take long once those two players got together. After Kelly Chase had taken the shot, they came together behind the net, and Kelly Chase immediately dropped his gloves. And they continue to battle back behind the goal. There aren't a whole lot of punches connecting right now, and I think what the game plan is here for the linesmen is let them punch themselves out, make sure they're so tired that they can't do it again. advantage with Kelly Chase a very smart fighter he doesn't lose very often in the second half of this fight has belonged to Kelly Chase Chase finally has a jersey pull up over his head two big strong guys battling one another they're both going to go and uh, sit down and go to the locker room they get a chance to cool off I don't think they can either one of them can play the rest of the way in the second period if they have it I like to fight one of those guys for two minutes. Huh? No. <laughs> you imagine, I mean, if you think about it, that was what, about a minute, minute and a half? Yeah. Minute and a half? Yeah. A round of boxing is three minutes, Joey. Imagine beating your brains in for three minutes and then take one minute off and do it again. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. And they're holding on and yeah. on skates yeah. and trying to get leverage and yeah, now throwing their equipment off and Kelly Chase ripping Smith's helmet off so he could feel some of his punches. And this all started again right after the initial shot by Kelly Chase. They both came together behind the net, got their sticks up, and right away Kelly Chase doesn't waste any time at all as he will end up throwing his gloves down. He gets his gloves in the face of Smith, and Kelly Chase was the really the aggressor on this play, even though it won't be called that way. And then they really went at it. Both Smith and Kelly Chase, two big boys, both good fighters. And the linesman just stepped away, let those two go at it. And we await the announcement. There's a uh, special seating area that may be just right for your entertainment needs. And the 
club seat section at the new Peel Center. The Blues are currently taking orders for club seats and have a special phone line set up to handle your inquiries at 781-7200. Call for your brochure today. Major penalties to both Smith and Kelly Chase fighting majors. And we go back to play with a 2-1 St. Louis lead late here in period number two. And the Hawks controlling the puck from center. They dish it off down to Rutu at the left side. He fires it right on Joseph. That's made the stop. The rebound comes out, and the Hawks shoot that one offline. Nedved has it for the Blues. And I heard a whistle. It wristed up back into the Chicago end. Suter back to touch it. We get an icing call here against St. Louis. That'll bring the play back into the Blues zone. You know, the reason why the Blues had to ice the puck on this last play is Chris Chelios continually, every time he's on the ice, he pinches in the zone continually. And a lot of times when you're a winger and you think you've got plenty of time and you look up, there's Chris Chelios and he actually forces the icing. Ned Bed has it right there and Chris Chelios is up on the play and then pulls back and, Chel and Ned Bed had to wait, decide to make a play, tries the long pass and it's icing on the Blues. But he is so effective at moving in the zone Physically, he's very strong, and he's an excellent skater as well. And you know, I noticed that you said that, and Jenny, I noticed earlier in the game, uh, Nedved, in this period, too, that he came down and he looks up, and he he's not quite sure what he wants to do with the puck. And Chelios is the man that's forcing that play because he, he made one play, he circled around, went back towards the net, and it came out usually when he would come around and turn and skate out. And he's a little unsure of himself right now, Nedved, of what to do with the puck when he comes out. Yeah, and that's what, that's what makes it so difficult. Nedved trying to learn the left wing position after being a center his entire yep. career is a little hesitant over on the boards. Here's Housley with the uh, puck over to Duchesne and winded up Stasny. Banks it ahead. And that took a check there, but he does direct it back into the Chicago zone. Belfour to Christian Rutsu. Slipped around the far wing and uh, deflected by Isabard all the way up ice. Let's see if icing goes the other way. Yeah, will. It'll be against Chicago this time. Well, there's a lot more blues action to come, so sit back and open an ice cold Budweiser for that crisp, clean, classic taste that only comes from the king of beers. And we would like to take this time to congratulate Jody Palmasano. She was the winner of the Hardy's Restaurant Southwest Airlines Win the Windy City Contest. Jody and three of her friends will be rooting for the Blues this coming Friday night in Chicago Stadium. The she Blues won the whole city. She, she won everything. <laughs> <laughs> so she'll be. Heading to Chicago to see the Blues and the Hawks, courtesy of Hardee's and Southwest Airlines. Janney of the Blues against Roenick on this faceoff, and Roenick uh, cleanly won that one. It's pulled back behind the Chicago net. Chelios after it backhanded away, rink wide to the near side, but the Blues step in and they steal. Murray Barrett, hurrying back into the Blues in, comes down and fires a slap shot that Chelios got his stick out and deflected it up into the seats. Let's update quickly on the scoreboard, Florida. Uh, leading Quebec, and that may be a final. 3-2, I think, was in the third period, that score. And the Panthers lead. The Islanders and Capitals are tied at three in the third at Washington. And Toronto now leading Dallas 4-1 to one in period number two at uh, Dallas. Meanwhile, referee Don Koharski has really done a good job of keeping this game under control. He's letting enough go not to cause a riot here at the arena, yet at the same time calling the things that are pretty obvious. Harsky will be around for the playoffs, and I'm sure uh, when you get to the finals, too, and down the road, he's uh, established his mark as being one of the best in the league. Shanahan right side to Housley. His slap shot ran right to the net and screened partially with Belfour. He got the glove up to hold it. Now Suter and Miller collide after. Is Suter going to get a penalty on this play? He is. He is. Gary Suter will go off after the whistle. He took Kevin Miller into the net, and Don Koharski right there will make the cross-checking call, and Speaking of Don Koharski, you mentioned the veteran official. He's going to be moving to St. Louis. Getting back to that penalty, the long shot by Phil Halsey from the point. The stop is made by Belfour. And then after the whistle, Suter with the cross check on Kevin Miller into the crossbar of the net. And Suter will go off. I mentioned Don Koharski. He's moving to St. Louis. The NHL wanted a one of the senior officials to, to be here in St. Louis. So Koharski who's been living in Canada for most of his life, is on the verge of buying a house here in St. Louis. He's been looking around. In fact, Larry Pagey, the former Blues player that is in the real estate business, has been helping Don Koharski find a house here in St. Louis. It's interesting because we're seeing more and more of that. Jerry Papin now lives, one of the lines,
Heisman in Pittsburgh, and he works out of there. And we're seeing more and more central ice type of thing. When you look at St. Louis and Pittsburgh, they're probably two of the best as far as uh, distributing referees and officials uh, from all around the National Hockey League. And it's become uh, a countrywide game, if you will, in the USA and, and of course, uh, in Canada, too. So they've got to centralize some locations, and they do just like a lot of other people do in corporate business. They set it up that way. Here comes Hall. Breaking back into the Chicago end on the power play. Brett Hall denied on that maneuver by Route 2. And he'll slip it back into St. Louis ice. Well, one of the reasons why Chicago is such a, an outstanding penalty-killing team is because of their aggressive play. The Blues have a lot of skill on the ice, but Chicago is forcing the Blues to move the puck quickly. And that's uh, causing a few problems for them. Hall on the left side. Couldn't have plucked it home as it cut the post. Actually just rung up the outside of it and now directed back to center by Chicago. And he had a good opportunity there. Set up by Hall. Ronick shorthanded coming back. Coming to the St. Louis line. He'll stop, turn, spin, and bank it away on the backhand into the St. Louis zone. Well, and that's a way you can beat a good, aggressive penalty-killing unit like Chicago. If you move the puck quickly, normally two quick passes and someone will be open. And Janney had a wonderful opportunity just off the post. Bear into the left wing to Brett Hall. And he'll wrap it around the horn, right side to Janney. Janney banking in behind the net, and Chelios gets control of it. Chelios shoots it off Barron's leg, and here's a hook by Barron on Richie Sutter, but play continues. And on to the St. Louis line, Zombo with 40 seconds to go in the period, 25 on the penalty. Lead pass to Hall, and a wrist shot. Chelios got his body in front of that one to block it. Centered back out, Janney can't get to it and hit his leg. Graham. Trying to find the handle on it will. And here's a two-on-two -two break for the Hawks coming back short-handed. They move into the St. Louis in, and Chelios now swings back and carries the puck to kill the time. Skating Wells, Chris Chelios. Chelios now finds an opening and plays it in. One second left on the penalty. Good skating by Chelios. And the Blues go back and get it, and they fail to score in this power play chance. Nine seconds left in the period. A steal by Rutu in the Blues in. Rutu off the left wing boards. Dropa takes a shot to flick it right in on Joseph, and he stops that play as Dubinsky had a good chance to tie the game late here in the second period. But stopped there by Curtis Joseph. Don't miss out on the uh, unbelievable savings at Metro Lighting's huge spring tent sale this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the parking lot of Metro Lighting's Arsenal. Location, see the uh, light and say. Well, Steve, Steve Dubinsky had a great chance deflecting the shot, and Curtis Joseph made the save. Meanwhile, just prior to all this, the Blues had a chance of their own. Fred Hall fakes a shot and then sets up Janney, who's all alone on the other side. No one around him, and Janney deflecting the shot on his backhand. That puck just goes right off the post. Chelios came all the way over, left Janney wide open. And Janney on the backhand, boy, that just came off his stick. He had a wide open net. He actually probably, Mike could have stopped the puck and yep. taken his time and put it in, but he attempts the deflection, lets the puck get away from him a little bit and off the post. One uh, second left, they drop the puck, and that ends the period. So the Blues, after leading one nothing at the end of one, now the tempers heat up here again late after the uh, horn sounded here. The, Blues have filed out of their bench. Chicago remains on the bench. Hopefully things will cool down and they will. We played two periods here. And the arena in St. Louis. Coming up in the intermission, Rick Mahar will visit with Tony Amani of the Chicago Blackhawks. And this is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Blues moving left to right to begin period number three. They start the period with a one goal advantage here, and Brett Hull looks to move it ahead to Nedved. He breaks into the Chicago end, stops on the near side, swing it over to the far corner. Duchesne did not uh, go in to get it, and the Hawks now take possession. And it's Chris Chelios winding the puck over to Jeff Chance, the center iceman for the Hawks. He is stopped on the play at the blue line, and the Blues take over again. Wrist it up to Stasny. Stasny looking for Nedved, who cruises in deep. Uh, underneath the skates, and now we'll jam up around Stosny battling Cunnyworth. The whistle sounds, and Stosny's going to get a roughing call. Peter Stosny just reached out and poked Randy Cunnyworth in the face, and he'll get the minor penalty here, and the Blues are going to be short-handed. A big chance for the Hawks early in the third. Yeah, Nedbin had gone in to try and forecheck and control the puck, and he was taken out of the play by Gary Suter. Following those two players in was Peter Stosny, and 
Cunningworth was with him, and Cunningworth just knocked a stick out of Stosny's hand, and then Stosny retaliated with a right punch to the head. Cunningworth took a step back, looked at the referee, Don Koharski, and Koharski makes the call. So we played just 36 seconds of this third period. The Blues leading it 2-1, to one, but Chicago gets an early power play in the third. Kelly Chase uh, in the penalty box with Stosny after uh, the fighting major late in the second period. He's still in there. Greg Smith also for the Blackhawks serving his time. So Chicago starts the power play and on the ninth they're 0 for 5. This is uh, one of the reasons uh, they can look at themselves if they don't win this game. They just haven't been able to convert on the power play. And they'll see if they can do it here. Let me get that feeling, Joey, and I, and I have uh, throughout the, the game that it's up for grabs right now on the Blues are going to try and kill this penalty, and Chelios comes up, and the Hawks now drive it deep into the St. Louis end. Joseph watches the play, and Zombo takes it, and he'll wank it out of danger. Now, Mike, that's a good point, because this has been a game where we've had so many swings in momentum. The Blues would dominate for a while, and Chicago would come back with their forechecking and their defense pinching in. We've talked about the power plays, and you're right. I think this game, especially being 2-1, is, is still up for grabs. Here's Suter at the left point. He stumbles a bit. Miller, though, pokes it away from you, and Rick Zombo has it shorthanded out to Barron. Barron just kicks it ahead back into the Chicago zone. A minute 12 to go on the penalty to St. Louis. Early in the third, the Blues lead 2-1. Chelios comes right up the alley now, working for Chicago. Snap it off the boards, around to the right wing corner. Eisenbart went in. He didn't get to it. Ronick will. Ronick to the right point. Good pass. Chelios coming up, pushing to the net. Stopped by Joseph. The rebound. It was one of the few you'll see, but it's picked up by the Blues, and Duchesne's going to bang that one all the way up ice. Oh, putting pressure on Belfour. Belfour swings it over to Rutu with 45 to go on the Blues. Minor to Stosny. Rutu scrambling through, coming to the Blues line. Maybe tried one too many moves there. Housley poke checked it away. And here is Gary Suter delivering the puck back behind the St. Louis net. And Hull. Oh, all night long, to me, has been extremely powerful on penalty killing. He has just read the play so well and has moved the puck out of his own end. Key times. Rutu's pass over to Carney, and he comes to the Blues line. Shanahan took that one away. Leaves it for Kevin Miller. Miller turns, and he finds an opening. The Hawks have to race all the way back to get it again. And, and Phil Housley as well, who is, again, he's seeing time killing penalties as a forward. He has stepped in and hasn't looked out of place at all. Eisenbart. Final seconds of this power play. Tap it in behind the Blues net. Nobody's there. St. Louis in control of it. And Shanahan with a penalty over. Stosny's back on. The Blues are at equal strength. Stosny goes to the bench. Ralph comes on now for the Blues. And he puts pressure on Rutu. But Rutu slips it into the left wing corner of the St. Louis in. Here's Cunningworth centering. Nobody there. Kevin Miller turns and rivals it off the boards. This will be an icing call against the Blues. Chelios to touch up with 16.59 left here in the third, and St. Louis still holding on to a 2-1 lead. Well, now, we've, uh, pardon, pardon me, Mike. Uh, we're talking about some changes on, on both these teams, and one of the real pluses for Chicago has been Randy Cunningworth, and this was a player that they tried to acquire last year at the trading deadline, but he was hurt, but he has come in and played very, very good hockey for Chicago. He scored four goals since he has been here. In fact, he scored two against the Blues in a recent game in Chicago. But he has stepped in, given this team some grit, some leadership. He's been around the league for a long time, and you saw him one of his stints, at least in Pittsburgh. Yep. But he has come in and done a fine job for Chicago. I talked to him prior to the game. He seemed very happy in Chicago. But when the trade was made and when he went to Chicago, here's Groba from the left point shooting when deflected. The word was that Cunningworth, who will be a free agent at the end of this year, would want to, was going to go back and sign with Hartford at the end of the season. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. The Blues, two, and the Blackhawks, one. We'll return in a moment. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Welcome back to the arena. Joe Micheletti, Mike Lang, Rick Mahar, and Bruce Affleck are here. We're just into the third period. The Blues leading the Blackhawks by a goal. If you tuned in, you were looking for Ken Wilson. He is on assignment tonight. Bring this game to you now in the third period with 16.45 left. And the Blues leading by one. Chicago in its own territory. And Horacek trying to relay it ahead, and he does. It comes to center now on the right side to Shantz. He cuts around. Housley moves into the slot with a nice move. A backhand shot, and that's stopped by Joseph. That might have cut the pipe too, to his left. Rope is in deep on the play for Chicago. Threw it back, but it's cut off. And here come the Blues back on the move. Housley leads the parade back going in. Montgomery going to the net, and Housley shoots it right to the net where it's stopped by goaltender Belfour, and he has possession of his glove. Boy, what a move by Jeff Shantz to get inside the 
Blues territory and make the play. Shans actually started the play from the neutral zone. He'll just carry it. He'll just carry it from his right all the way to the left. Puts a good move on Phil Housley. And Shans, who has not scored a goal just since December, with the backhand shot. Curtis Joseph with a fine glove save on Jeff Shans. And when you talk about making changes, one of the reasons the Hawks traded Jeff Shans was be or Kevin Todd, I should say, was because of the fine play of the youngster, Jeff Shans. Gary Kimball did a good job there, too, of running interference. It may have been called on a penalty, but he wasn't. Of running uh, Crossman away from the play, allowing Chance an opportunity to come in one-on-one -on, -one on goaltender Joseph. Good point. Here in the right wing circle of the Chicago zone, Stasny against uh, Jeremy Roney comes right point to Hull, and a slam shot, he shoots it! talk about the importance of face-offs and what Peter Stastny has meant to this team. Prior to the face-off, he stepped away because he wanted the Chicago player to put his stick down first. So he stepped away and then he got back into position after the Chicago player put his stick down. So he's in position first for those of you that are watching on TV and then he goes back in, wins it cleanly back to Brett Hall who fired it through a maze of players through the legs of Ed Belfort. 45 to 50 feet. Hull gets the goal, number 54 in the season. And here comes Stasny again, breaking back into the Chicago zone. Michelios now a 3-1 St. Louis lead and a holding call coming up. Kind of a penalty coming up here. And it's going to go against uh, the Blackhawks, Chris Chelios. Mike, getting back to that play again, Stasny was there, and then he stepped aside and repositioned himself, and then the perfect face off right back to the stick of Brett Hall. There were some players between Brett Hall and Ed Belfour, and Hall with the hard shot goes right through the legs. Boy, oh boy, has Sassany been some kind of a player since he has come to St. Louis and solidified the center ice position. And even going back to the last game where the Blues won in overtime in Chicago, it was Peter Sassany that won a big face off with less than 30 seconds to go in the game, and Steve Duchesne tied the game before the Blues went on to win it in overtime. And directed aside by Rutu back into the St. Louis in a 3-1 St. Louis lead now with the Blackhawks. And the Blues trying to add to it. They get a big goal from Brett Hall. Hall now with 54, one shy of the league leaders. Here comes Ganny rushing in, coming to the Chicago and looks for Hall on the right wing. Can't get it through to him, and Rutu again snaps it away. Floats easily back into the St. Louis zone. And Stasny gets an assist on that goal, and a lot of times they don't on plays where they make like that, and they're just as important as any assist or goal you'll score in games when they can win those faceoffs and control the play. Carney getting the puck over to Rich Sutter, and uh, that'll be very valuable uh, in the playoffs should uh, Stasny be a big force in that category. Yeah, Mike, that was like a perfect pass. I mean, that, yep. that puck didn't come back with too much velocity. It was perfect right on the tape of Brett Hall, who didn't have to move at all. All he had to do was simply tee it up. The puck wasn't rolling. It was nice and flat. Donnie with the Rich Sutter shorthanded. He fires it in on Curtis Joseph, and he'll make that save with the right pad. Joseph with a two-goal advantage right now, and here comes Hall streaking back into the Chicago end. And Danny Shanahan on the left wing. He has two tonight. Shanahan with a pair, Hall with one, and the Hawks take it away, and Roning shorthanded as a man open right side, Murphy. Coming to the Blues end, goes to Murphy, walks in, he shoots it, and it's stopped by Joseph, and he got a pad on that. Roning again scrambles, gets the puck over to Gary Suter, comes in a slap shot. Where was it? It went up the glove, apparently, of Joseph, and the Blues come back. Two good scoring chances for the Hawks, but they can't beat Joseph. Now here are the Blues again on the rush to the right wing side of the Chicago end. Shanahan slip it over to the far wing, and comes to Doug Crossman. Crossman belt it back in behind the net. It comes to Shanahan one more time. Stosny goes to the uh, back of the toward behind the goal. The pass was intended for him, and it went by him, and it's clear. Nine seconds on the Chicago penalty. And the Blues rush up for the final time here on this man advantage. Sneaking off the boards, and Weinrich goes in to take uh, command of it. Chelios comes on. The penalty's over. Lead pass to Chelios. Here he comes, trying to get a breakaway. And he has to slow the play down because Tilly had the angle on him. Now Chelio sweeping in between the circles, thrown by Stasny. He comes up one on three, a lot of red jersey in front of him. He's going to shoot the puck in. Comes off the board to Kevin Miller. Looks for a trailer in Nedved. Nedved's in front. He can't get a stick free. And Belfort reaches out to grab it and hold on. Push around that net is Nedved. Got around 
the Chicago goal. 13-35 left here in period number three. The Blues have added another one. They lead Chicago 3-1. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Now the rule is that the visiting team has to put their stick on the ice for a face-off first. Stastny waited for Roenick, stepped away, and then went back in, and then won the face-off clearly. He made a smart play. That's a veteran move to just hold off, show a lot of patience, and then he wins the face-off, and there's Brett Hall, who just blasted right through a maze of, of players. Ed Belfour was screened somewhat on the play, and the puck right through the legs of Belfour to give the Blues a 3-1 lead. The Hawks, after this face-off on their own end, Weinrich. Rich to the head to center to Shantz and uh, into the St. Louis zone, but the Blues break it up again. They force it back to the Chicago line. Carney stops that maneuver. Sailing up into St. Louis real estate. Duchesne in the Blues. Try and come back up ice. Blues captain Brett Hall is going to bang it into the Chicago win up the left wing corner boards. And Shantz corrals it with 13.07 to go in the third. 3-1 the score. The Blues lead. And Horacek trying to find a lane. Wrist it up the right side. Kimball goes in, one arms it towards the front of the net, and it does come in front of Joseph, and he stops it, and they stop by chance to come in and put the ice right up into the face of Curtis Joseph. And here are the uh, home games remaining on the slate. Thursday night, the Los Angeles Kings are here. They're trailing 1-0 against the Sharks in Los Angeles at the moment. Sunday, Dallas at noon. That'll be Coca-Cola team poster uh, afternoon. And Thursday, the 14th, the Winnipeg Jets here, fan appreciation night. And again, just a, a reminder, that game Sunday in Dallas, that's Sunday the 10th, that will be a 12 o'clock start. As Joseph staring on. As he watches the play here to his left, 25 feet away, the faceoff between Ronick and Janney. The Blues win the draw. Slip it ahead to center to Shanahan, and he... Goes to that right wing corner boards again. Off the board, Gianni gets the puck, and he fires it right to Belfort, and he stops it. Shanahan loves to go to that corner, and watching him drop that puck in. And they look to just kind of bounce it out and look for a man cutting on the play and <clears throat> look for that puck as he, he moves into that area. And Gary Suter and Kevin Miller again having words. And remember, Gary Suter was sent off at the end of that second period for cross-checking Kevin Miller after the whistle. And I talked about Suter struggling somewhat to find his game here in Chicago. He wasn't used to playing in this division, that Pacific division, much more wide open, not quite as much hitting. So it's taken him a little while to adjust to a closer checking style of play. Ronick and the Hawks after the face off now have command of the puck. Amani trying to go back to Ronick on the right side. He'll get it back to Murphy and a drop pass. Amani comes in, but he couldn't get to the puck. The Blues counter attack. Kevin Miller on to Janney at center circle. Well, the uh, Hawks down, that's Amani behind the St. Louis goal. The Blues have an advantage here, but they can't uh, get anybody around the net. Amante took a tremendous hit from Brendan Shanahan on the play, and he's really favoring his leg. Now we get a little battle break of Shanahan and Joel Murphy starting to go at it. And that was what uh, you were talking about. Shanahan, as Murphy came after him, apparently, and the temper heated up, and then Shanahan got involved with Joe Murphy. Amante still struggling to get to the bench, and he is hurt. Suter has a hold of uh, one of the Blues here. Miller. Well, that's Rick Zombo. Uh, Zombo, sorry. And Rutu also uh, involved as well. So there's actually two players on Rick Zombo. And actually, what, what has happened here, Chicago was making a change. So they have six players out there. The Blues also have six players on the ice as well. Chelios now in the middle of uh, the parade. And this whole thing started, Mike, on a play where Chicago had the rush coming down the ice and in front of the net, Amante was getting ready to take the pass and just before he could shoot the puck, Brendan Shanahan was coming back on the play and really from a, from a blind side, Amante didn't see him coming and Shanahan with a tremendous shoulder to Amante and he gets knocked down and then all this play erupted when Amante was trying to get off the ice and everyone was involved with the puck in front or in between the two benches. Don Koharski, the referee, will have to sort things out. It appears almost assuredly that Shanahan and Murphy will be headed in. In fact, they've already taken a seat in the respective penalty box. Uh, now, I was talking about the play 
And Amante is number 10. He's trying to get control. Now Shanahan's coming from the other side. Amante doesn't see him coming. He's trying to lean to his left, so he's got all his weight on, on one leg, trying to move to his left. Shanahan is coming the other way, and with Shanahan's great strength and his speed, I believe it was just a knee that collapsed. Boy, you could just see his right knee look like it collapsed somewhat on the play, and Amante right away knew that he was hurt, stayed down, and then as play continued, he was able to get, get back to his feet from behind the Blues net and make his way all the way to the Chicago bench. Shanahan is one of the players in the penalty box for the Blues. Joe Murphy, the Chicago Blackhawk player in the penalty box. The Blues are going to end up shorthanded in this situation. We'll double check, though, but Shanahan gets a minor for high sticking and a roughing minor, and Murphy gets two minutes for roughing. So if I'm not mistaken, that will be a power play chance here for the Chicago Blackhawks. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Well, these penalties coming about at 7.46, and they'll have to have somebody go in to serve the minor penalty for Shanahan, and Kelly Chase goes over. They put his uh, number up on the board, so he'll be the man serving the penalty, and Chicago, again, with another opportunity to get back into this game. This will be their seventh power play chance. And that's really been one of the key stories in this game. Really? Chicago, with the chances, they had the first power play opportunity of this game just a couple of minutes into the game, but it's been the Blues penalty killing that has kept Chicago off balance. Brett Hall, you mentioned, has, has seen a great deal of time killing penalties, as has Brendan Shanahan, and Shanahan is going to be missed in this situation because he has been one of the Blues' top penalty killers, leads the league in shorthanded goals with six, and now the Blues have some work to do with Shanahan being in the penalty box and Chicago on the power play. And from a different perspective, and of course, uh, I work a lot of the Pittsburgh games and work them and, and, and I watch and we talked about this before the game and everything. But the guy that really has been steady and consistent throughout the whole thing is Curtis Joseph. He just continually and, and you take him for granted sometimes. I mean, and when we you look do. at it, I know you do. I mean, I know I'm telling you, but he's just he's there consistently night after night after night and he's just doing the job keeping the Hawks off the board. They've got 29 shots. Yeah, and the Blues uh, have certainly cut down on their shots against the last uh, six weeks or so, but in this game tonight, Joe Murphy in particular, two short-handed breakaways, missed both of them. Yeah. And here comes Ronick off the near side, bringing the puck to the left point to Suter. <clears throat> He'll crank it up, a shot, and Joseph reached up through a lot of traffic and pulls that one out of the atmosphere to hold on. Suter really gunned that shot. It was a rising uh, slap shot, and Joseph again with that big paw pulled it in. Well, his concentration is like it was in the playoffs last year. Joseph, you mentioned a maze of players. They all go to the front of the net. A pretty good job by the Blues and Murray Barron getting Rutu out of the way just before the shot. Barron actually with a cross check on Rutu takes him out of the way and then Barron very smartly steps to the side to allow Curtis Joseph to see that puck as it's coming through that lane. Good defensive play by Murray Barron. 11 minutes and 54 seconds left here in the third period. Jim Montgomery out here against Rutu. That's the face off to the right of Joseph. They drop the puck. Rutu won it cleanly to Suter. Left point. Where's he going to go with it? To go right side to Chelios of the Hawks. Back to Suter. Open center point. Swing it over to Roenick. Left wing circle. Moves in. Right side. Got him out open. Chelios suits it. Save made. Rebound. There is no rebound. And Joseph has it again. Boy, what a tremendous save. And give Chicago credit for moving the puck around. Right off the face off. And this is where they miss Shanahan as well. Jim Montgomery loses the face off to Rutu. And then the fake shot this time by Suter and Ronick again. And, he, and Ronick with a good pass from the left over to the right to Chelios moving in. So Joseph had to go left to right and then back over again to his left. And the quick shot by Chelios, he tries to get it through the pads, but Joseph with that, with that great leg strength and his ability to move side to side, gets across, makes a first save, and then he's there again as Isabart goes after the rebound. Tony Amani has gone to the Chicago dressing room, and you saw the frustration on Isabart. That, he, they had three shots there. They only put uh, three total, including Sue. Now they put another one up. They had three cracks at it there, and Joseph right there said, it's not going to happen. And they face off, so Amani has gone to the uh, Chicago dressing room. We'll probably not see him the rest of the way. On the right side, Rutsu, minute 22 to go. He shoots it to the net. Joseph again scrambles to make the save, and hold on, Zombo flattens. Isabart in front of the goal. And again, a good job by the Blues defense. They're taking the man 
from in front of Curtis Joseph. This time it's Rick Zombo making the defensive play. Chicago, they'd like to make the one pass and then throw the puck at the net, either, either with a wrist shot or a hard slap shot. And again, this time, Chelio starts off the play, and Ruzzo will just take the shot, and in front is Eisenbart. He's trying to get to the front of the net, but just an outstanding defensive play by Rick Zombo. His positioning was perfect. Eisenbart had to try and get through Zombo to get to the front of the net. Zombo wouldn't let him. Hawks have been winning a lot of face-offs here in this power play. Ronick just won another one. It comes right point over to Chelios. Chelios off to the left wing boards. Suter comes over to take it, and he'll drop it behind the net. Nobody there. Around to the right side to Chelios again. He'll poke in the corner for Jeremy Roenick. Roenick looking to Rutu, Christian Rutu. Wheel and deal, and he'll pass left point. Suter goes after it. It came by him and out of the zone. Montgomery and Miller, the penalty killers for Coach Bob Berry. Barron and Zombo back. And here is Roenick trying to get in around the net, and it hopped off his stick right to Joseph, and he doesn't take any chances at all. He just grabs that puck in this situation and holds on to it. Another and, face off. Yeah, and it's another good defensive play by Rick Zombo, something that... Is, is very unnoticeable, but Roenick nearly had a breakaway. Suter is going to set him up, and Zombo, who was beat on the play, turns with his stick and then just deflects it. As Roenick had it on his stick, he would have had a good scoring chance, and Zombo, with good reactions, just turning and poking the puck as Roenick was going past him, poking it off his stick so that Joseph could cover up on the play. The Hawks have called timeout pretty good time to do so here. They're down by a pair and they need to try and get this power play goal uh, going. This is their seventh opportunity and they have only 47 seconds left. Now Daryl Sutter trying to keep his power play unit fresh calls the timeout. Now he's explaining things to his players at the Chicago bench. And again, that has been a real key in this game. Chicago's seventh power play of the evening. They have not scored a power play goal as of yet. In fact, they've had better chances sure short yeah. than, the, right. than they have on the power play. Housley is going to come up, up up front now with Brett Hull. And uh, Zombo and Barrett will play it on the backside. This face off in the left wing circle this time in the St. Louis zone. Brett Hull's going to try and win it against Christian Ruth, who has been very good tonight. Battle for it. Hull works it back, but it comes to the left point to Suter. Suter of Chicago skates laterally, fires it on, and that stop made by Joseph. The rebound out to the right wing corner. Chelios of Chicago bouncing around to the near wing, and the Blues get it, though, and they fire it up ice. Eddie Belfour, the Chicago goaltender, comes out quickly. Gary Suter, Chicago point man, takes it from him. Comes up with 25 to go in the penalty to the Blues. And rifling the puck back in, it comes off the board. Joseph grabbed it up in the air, dropped it. Now he's out of the net. Comes free from him around the near side. Joseph gets back in the goal, and it comes to Suter, left point. Right side to Chelios, moves in, pucks on edge, and he fires that one, but he missed the cage. Around to the left wing boards. Roenick might have a chance. He walks in around one man. Fires into the far corner and he couldn't get the net. It went off of the glass on the far wing. Back come the Hawks again to set it up. Right point. Chelios looking down deep. Took Rutu. Penalty is over. And here comes Eisenbart now behind the net going to Rutu. Rutu to the right of the cage. Comes out. Turns. Looks. Shoots. And he missed the goal. And Kelly Chase banks it ahead. Here comes Housley. He's going to fly up into the Chicago in. He'll skate with a puck looking for Brett Hall, but Hall is taken out of the action by Rutu, and he now comes to the St. Louis bench. Chase colliding with one of the Hawks back behind the, St. Uh, the uh, Chicago goal. Chelios and Chase with a puck work back on the St. Louis in. Belfort comes over now and takes a crack at Chase and starts swinging it in. And he Belfort gets involved here with Kelly Chase as he and Chelios have grabbed a hold of one another. And Belfort wanted to have him let him go. Well, Belfort, Belfort should be should be thrown out of the game for being the third man in in an altercation. We can think the chances of that are. <laughs> <laughs> we'll good. be back. Blues three, the Blackhawks one. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. There's a lot of noise here at the arena. 9.44 to go. Now the play started with Kelly Chase going in. He had just come out of the penalty box, and he and Chris Chelios get tangled up. And Belfour leaves the net as Chase and... Chelios are going at it, and then he just starts punching away with his gloves on. The referee, Don Koharski, is there to pull Belfour away. But uh, they will get an extra penalty. Belfour is going to pick up one. I think uh, the Blues will end up on the uh, power play into this. They've got to put a man on the penalty box that was on the ice. Chelios in for roughing. Chase gets a roughing call. Belfour, two for leaving the crease and two for roughing. So he's going to get a double minor. Double minor. 
Meanwhile, this gives us a chance to send a send get well wishes to Bill McGrath. He's at St. Elizabeth's Hospital in Belleville. He's a big blue season ticket holder. We'd like to send him our best and get well soon, Bill. If Chance has gone in to serve the uh, penalties to Belfort. Didn't put anything on the board as of yet. And one of the uh, longtime NHL officials here at the arena, Ed Fergus, is at St. Luke's Hospital, and we wish Ed a speedy recovery. Certainly do. Unless I'm mistaken here, the Blues should have a power play, and they haven't put any time on the board. They might be trying to sort everything out here, and here comes Koharski over, the referee, to talk to the uh, folks there at the penalty timekeeper's bench as if to say, uh, you know, let's, let's put some time up here. Perhaps that may not be the right penalty calls. They may have to readjust them. Stanley Cup playoffs are right around the corner. Any Blues ticket outlet or 291-7600. That's the number to call. Blues will be matching it up in the Stanley Cup playoffs. On your right, Mike, they're still at the, at the penalty timekeeper's box trying to get things straightened out. Which might mean that it's not going to be a double minor. And, uh, and I'm not quite sure if Koharski now pulls back. They're going to have to put some time on the board. If and what, in fact, we were received from the original penalties is correct. Now tonight's goal scoring recap brought to you by your Midwest GMC truck dealers, Bellman, Bonarito, and Brockman GMC. And here it is. Shanahan is 44th on a power play. Carney and tied it. Shanahan is 45th on a big goal by Hall here in the third, Joe. Yeah, it really was a big goal to give the Blues that two goal lead. Meanwhile, the Blues will have a four minute power play. So, Mike, you were right the first time. Belfort with the double minor and the Blues with less than 10 minutes to go in this game. A big power play opportunity. Yeah, and Belfort really can uh, look at himself because he's got to left the crease and then erupt up uh, Kelly Chase. And they egged him on into it and he puts his club shorthanded for four minutes. 3 1 the score. The Blues settle in from their own end. And here comes Steve Duchesne. St. Louis with a big chance really to open this one up. And Duchesne is going to wrap it back into the Chicago zone. Near corner. Carney comes up with it. Can he clear? He can. Stosny putting pressure on. Shanahan with a pair tonight. And Brett Hull with one. Hull is out here right now for the Blues. Ned Bed, Stosny, and Hull up front. They've got Housley and Duchesne as the point man. Around it goes to Hull. Center point. Duchesne shoots one. That save made. The rebound. Sutter. And she Sutter has it. And he'll rip it back into the St. Louis zone. And Mike, certainly the Blues would like to score on this power play, and they, and they have to try to do that. At the same time, they've got to keep in mind this aggressive Chicago penalty-killing unit, 13 shorthanded goals on the season, and they've had some chances shorthanded tonight. Well, Karap will deliver it over to the left point to Crossman. Crossman, though, couldn't make a play in the Hawks' steal. Here comes Ronick, shorthanded, moving to the Chicago zone. Moves in against Tilly, and Tilly turns him around. And he falls down. Two Hawks are trapped, and here come the Blues. Tilly on the play, coming to the Chicago end. Janney over to Miller up, and he got a shot go. Came off the heel of his stick. That went wide. Janney again behind the cage. Over to Miller. A shot. He scores. Kevin Miller from inside. And the Blues now lead 4-1. And Miller is smiling like a butcher's dog. What a pass from Craig Janney from behind the net. You talk about having the goaltender fooled on the play. It all starts in the blue zone with Ronick trying to get going shorthanded. Then the Blues will break out four on two, led by Tom Tilly. Tilly's going to end up dropping the pass to Craig Janney, who then attempts the, the pass, makes the pass. The shot by Prokhorov goes behind the net. But there's Jenny. He fakes one way, goes the other way, and then throws it back the other way. Belfort's looking the other side. A great play by Miller to get in the open. And Miller just puts it into the empty net for the power play goal, and the Blues are up 4-1. Jenny's made two real pretty passes oh, in this boy. game, boy, to set up goals. That is a power play goal, and the Blues remain on the power play. They have cashed in for the second time tonight. And they lead Chicago by three. That might have been the one that sealed it up here. Down the right wing, here comes Brett Hall trying to make a play, and he can. It comes away from him and cleared by Chicago. Mike, there's just not many players in the league that can make that pass like that from behind the net. We've seen Gretzky 
for many, many years, but Housley is terrific from back there. Or I should say Janning. Round to the right point, and up with it will be Housley. Off the left side to Duchesne. He'll set it up for Brett Hall. Now the Blues really threatening to really open this up uh, totally if they could score here, but they can't on this occasion as Weinrich takes in there and pass away and goes to Cunningworth. Cunningworth's going to slip it back into St. Louis territory. And the reliable Curtis Joseph gives the puck to Steve Duchesne. Seven minutes to go in regulation. 4-1 St. Louis, and the Blues actually just dropped it in front of their bench and gave it away. Nedved, though, scrambles to get possession back. Starts from his own end. He'll pass it over to Brett Hall, and he finds a lane around Roney. Going left wing to Nedved. He blows right by the defenseman. Smith going to the net. Cuts behind the goal now. Nedved hit hard on the play by Smith. Duke caught him from behind. He made the mistake to get beat on the play, but he came back and recovered and put uh, Nedved hard into the boards. Cleared by Chicago. And the Blues come up with 25 seconds. Lee pass to Nedved. He's back with a puck on a breakaway. Walks in and back. Hey! Nedved drills it over the body of Balfour. And the Blues lead 5-1. Great shot. A terrific goal, and it's all started by Curtis Joseph. He'll get an assist on the play as he comes out of his net to play the puck and then a perfect pass to Craig Janney. And then Janney looks up and puts a perfect pass to Peter Nedved, who got behind the Chicago defense. Then it's just a matter of Nedved deking, waiting. Belfort goes down, Nedved to his backhand, puts it high into the net to score the power play goal, and it's 5-1 for the Blues. Boy, just some great moves by Nedved. He started deking a couple of times. Belfort went down. Nedved to his backhand, deposits it into the open net. And that makes it 5-1 here at the arena. Well, they're loving it here, and the Blues really have just put this game out of reach for Chicago. Here comes Weinrich down the right wing. Losing the puck. On the move, left side, David Mackey looking for Montgomery instead of Cooper up, and he got a shot going again the second time here. He's had the puck come off the heel of his stick, and a turning backhand shot now as he comes out in front. Belfort stopped that one. The Blues with 29 shots, the Hawks with 35, but St. Louis leading 5 1. And directed away off the board. I'm going to check and see if that's a power play goal. And it should be. Power play goal by Nedved, a third of the game. We're going to stop and play here at the St. Louis Arena. The Blues rolling right along at the moment. They lead Chicago 5 1. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. The Blues score two power play goals on the double minor to Ed Bell for the first one. Craig Janney on a great pass. Kevin Miller to one side goes all the way over. Belfort thinks that Janney's coming out the other way. Gives Miller the perfect pass who puts it in. That makes it 4-1. Then Janney the great pass to Nedved who breaks in all alone and beats Belfort on the backhand to make it 5-1 Blues. And officially I've got the Blues 3 for 6 on the power play tonight. So you talk about a special teams game the way it was decided. And the Blues score on the power play. The Hawks do not. Another penalty coming up here. And it's going to be against Kelly Chase, and Chase now has got his hands going. Zombo gets involved, and here they all go. Rick Zombo and Darren Kimball, and now Greg Smith and Ramoff get uh, battling one another. This fight's still going on with Zombo and Kimball on the far side. And now another one breaks out with Smith and Tony Horacek, and Smith has him in trouble. He gets himself back up to Horacek. They're all jammed up, and now it's like tag team. Now you can see this coming. Kelly Chase was out there, and there were a number of players that took runs at Kelly Chase. And then Rick Zombo did a good thing and stepped in to help out Kelly Chase. And here's a big right by Murray Barron. Barron is the man involved in the corner there. With Smith. Yeah. Smith had the upper hand early, and then again, here comes Barron back. And who is this? That's Darren Kimball, who was involved. Up, uh, everything off. Kimball involved was involved with Zombo. Was Certainly Kimball is one of the tough guys in the league, but Kelly Chase had three or four players take a run at him. And Zombo was the first player to really come to his aid as Darren Kimball was trying to get at Kelly Chase from a different angle. Zombo jumped in. You want the ironic part of this all? Here's Kelly Chase at center with Tony Horacek. And he's not even involved. He's just skating and holding on to one another. Not yet. Smith gets over to say something to Chase as he goes off the ice. Well, that's a great job by Zombo because Chase was in a situation where he had a number of players coming after him, and Kimball was one of those players. Here we go now, Horacek and Chase. 
Well, it took a little while, didn't it, Mike? They threw a couple of punches at one another earlier and then backed off. They're still swinging away. An uppercut by Chase. Boy, that's got to be tough fighting with those helmets oh. on. I mean, it's he just not only tough to stand up, but he comes with an uppercut again. I wonder Horacek how most did. of them don't break their hands really by the time the year's over. I mean, they're, they're as much as they go. Now, Horacek, the former flyer, missed the first part of the season with back surgery. Didn't start playing again until December, and they're still going at it. Danny McCourt and Pat DeBuzzo earn their dollars as they separate those two. They're both going to be gone. they do get they get the hot water <laughs> well, oh, there boy. is a reason for it all <laughs> holy chase has had a busy night oh. <laughs> he'll be exhausted he'll well, to... and he's not the biggest guy around and you don't think the people of st louis appreciate his efforts he's only 190 pounds he's not considered one of the one of the Bigger, tough guys in the league, but he's a terrific, a terrific fighter, as we mentioned earlier. And again, he had about three players running him. First of all, Smith takes a run at him. And then he takes a high stick from Horacek. Kimball comes in as the third player. That's where Zombo really came to the aid of Kelly Chase by jumping, jumping on well, Darren Kimball. Kimball. And then the Blues had a couple other players. Karamnov, who's not used to the rough stuff. Gets knocked down a few times. Murray Barron out there as well. And then Barron got involved in a battle. So we had actually two fights going on at one time. Kimball and Rick Zombo. And Kimball known more for his fisticuffs than, than Zombo. But Zombo holds his own really throughout this, as does Murray Barron, before all four of those players end up together in the corner. Meanwhile, Kelly Chase was tied up with Horacek before... They decided to be the main event after those <laughs> other two minor events That's right. finished, yeah. right? That was exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> he won a top billing. <laughs> we need, oh, as crazy it is, you needed the guy to come out and say, let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, Mike? There's still plenty of time left in this game, and it's certainly no surprise that these two teams would finish a game like this, 5-1, the Blues with a comfortable lead at this point. Still 527 to go in regulation time. And these two teams go back at it again Friday night in Chicago. And we're going to see a battle there in Chicago as well. So they'll straighten all these penalties out now and as we get a cheer from the crowd. And don't be surprised if this last 527 takes 1527 to play. Well, Blues fans, the, uh, this break in the action is a good time for you to break open a nice cold Budweiser and enjoy that crisp, clean, classic taste. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready. Because it's going to be a while before we get back and get all the penalties, so you get, you get time maybe for a second one. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a third. Now, meanwhile, the story of the game, the story of the game has been the ineffectiveness of the Chicago power play. They've gone 0 for 7. And when the game was 3 to 1, it was Kelly Chase and Chris Chelios that got involved behind the Chicago net. They came out, ended up getting wrapped up, and then it was Ed Belfort leaving his crease to come to the aid of Chris Chelios. And of course, he doesn't want Chelios getting hurt, so he comes to the aid of his teammate, and Belfort ends up being assessed a double minor on the play. So the, now the Blues go on the power play for four minutes. They score two power play goals, one by Kevin Miller, the other one on the breakaway by Peter Nedved. And all of a sudden, this game is out of reach for Chicago as the Blues lead it 5-1. to one. And it was shortly after that that Daryl Sutter decides to put his line of tough guys out there. Kelly Chase was also on the ice. And that's when everything broke loose here at the arena. And what is going to happen here is the Blues, or at least it looks like right yeah. now, will be shorthanded. And they are because they rule that uh, Zombo was the instigator in the fight. And they put uh, the uh, Blues shorthanded. In that situation, everybody else got fighting majors and game misconducts. Every, and Zombo and Gimbal both got game misconducts too, but he got the instigator penalty. 
So it gives the Hawks the uh, power play five on four. We're back to action. Chicago trailing five to one here in the third period. And Murphy of the Hawks around to the right wing corner of the St. Louis in. Duchesne tried to clear it out, couldn't do it. Bounces free. Suter comes on, but whack away by the Blues. Brennan Shanahan, and he deals it up into the Chicago into the ice surface. Chelios back to scoop it up. St. Louis five, and the Hawks just won here in the third, and Roney streaks through back into the St. Louis end. To Isobard on the right wing side. He'll move in, put it behind the net. And Chicago can't get to it, and Duchesne does a good job of wristing the puck off the boards. Right back to the Chicago Blue Line. Chicago defenseman Gary Suter has played all night long in the power play. Dallas Suter really hasn't made many changes on the power play at all, and this is their eighth opportunity, and they're 0 for 7. Here's Ronick on the right wing boards, getting the puck to Chelios. Center point now to Sutter. He skates laterally across to the left point to Chelios, shoots it right to the net. Joseph to save. The rebound cleared by the Blues. And back to get the puck at his own line is Chelios. Work it right wing into the St. Louis zone. And Housley back with 35 seconds to go on the penalty. Four minutes now left in regulation. And the Blues again able to direct it up. The penalty killing has been outstanding uh, tonight. And, uh, and Chicago's power play really hasn't been much to write home about, too. And here comes Carney into the slot. Left side of Rutu. Put it in front. They can't deflect it by Joseph. Right back behind the net. Rutu centers it out. And it will come to Carney at the left point. On the right side. Now they... Get across rink over to Route 2. He fires, save main, rebound. Graham can't beat Joseph. And when you get to the last resort, when they do it, Joseph stops them on every occasion. So, I mean, it's just been a perfect blend here tonight for the Blues in all forms of their special teams and goaltending. Out to the left point, Carney again. Penalty has expired now. And Karamnoff comes back on. They're running to one of the Blues. That's Route 2, and he'll get a penalty for that. He was looking for Route 2, and I think it's going to be a, a, a spearing call here. Randolph using now he gets involved in a fight uh, or a little hitting uh, match with Weinrich. Randolph apparently put the stick into Christian Rutu of the Blackhawks. He is headed off and Rutu looks towards him as he skates over to say something to him. Now Karamnoff had come out of the penalty box and he just came flying into the zone and Rutu didn't have a chance or at least I didn't think had a chance to see him coming. He does. Oof. And boy Karamnoff had the stick ended up Right in the midsection or between the legs of Rutu. Karamnov, you may remember when that whole battle broke out when they were away from it in the fight uh, situation of 1433. Somebody came in from behind, Horacek, and hit him from behind, That's blindsided right. him. That's right. And so when he came out, he was looking for the first red shirt I think he could find, and that happened to be. Karamnov uh, goes off here. And Christian Rutu now, he, he's back up and seems to be okay over at the Chicago bench. And on the play, Karamnov broke his stick. And he just had a tremendous amount of momentum and tried to step into Rutu. Rutu actually on the play tried to side sidestep him a little bit and avoid the check, but it was a stick of Karamnov that ends up getting Rutu. And it's a five-minute major for Spearing in a game misconduct. They have only two minutes posted on the board. They're going to have to correct that. This should be a five-minute major penalty. And right and now, the, the two minutes is... Oh, I'm sorry, it's the Cunningworth. Cunningworth gets a two-minute minor for rubbing. They have put the five up on the blue side. My apologies. Yeah, it was Cunningworth that actually ended up taking the swing at Karamnov after the play. So the situation is this. 3.15 to go now in regulation time. The Blues are up 5-1. to one. We'll play four on four for the next two minutes. And then the Blackhawks will have a power play for the remaining one minute and 15 seconds. Well, you told me before the game that uh, the Blues were involved in a very, uh, maybe not quite a similar game in Detroit over the last weekend, and they've been in a lot of the ice, uh, real feisty type of games with a lot of uh, physical play, and tonight was no exception here, too. Yeah, I think this game was uh, certainly a little more cleaner up until the last three or four minutes or so. We've seen a lot of outbreaks, but uh, the game in Chicago much more sticking right from the start of that game. Here comes Carney at the left side now, and the Blues in the quick uh, play to Graham, and he's robbed by Joseph on a quick shot from the left wing circle. Wow. Is he something? And even on this save on Graham, who got the shot off quickly, and the crowd is now bowing to Curtis Joseph behind, but Graham gets a shot off quickly, and Curtis Joseph makes the glove save and then looks to see if it's in the net. He's not sure if he has it. Finally feels it in his glove and just kind of tucks it in like it was easy. But he has really been something tonight. The shots on goal, 40 for Chicago, 
30 for the Blues, 16 to 7 in this period favoring Chicago. Both teams shorthanded by a man. And when it's all done, uh, Chicago, unless things change, of, of course, we'll have a power play late in this contest. Here's Jim Montgomery, though, bringing it back for the St. Louis Blues. Good pass to David Mackey. Steps into the Chicago end, puts the brakes on. Well, that's as far as it went as he lost control of the puck. And Jeff Chance now stepping up on the play for Chicago. Eric Weinrich, the uh, Hawks defenseman, will move down the right wing. Play is cut off uh, by the Blues. They again have the puck, and Tilly swings it up to David Mackey. Two and a half to go here in the third period. The Blues five, the Hawks one. They'll regroup and go to Chicago and play on uh, Friday night. Well, the Hawks and Rutu is trying to get into the uh, St. Louis in. He can't make that play. Blues just toying with the puck right now. They really don't have anything to, to do but kill the clock. And they will bring it on. They'll bring it to the Chicago end. Comes in with a backhand shot at the top of the stick of Eddie Belfour and up into the seats. Walker out making a nice move to come in. Right, he, he really did. Pardon me, Mike. He made a terrific move after taking a long pass. Chris Chelios is a defenseman, and he'll go inside out, and then Chelios is able to come back, though, and make the defensive play. Chelios came all the way back, got back in the play, and then it was actually the stick of Chris Chelios that deflected the backhand shot by Kovarov up and over the glass. That's a tremendous recovery by the Norris Trophy winner of a year ago, Chris Chelios. Space off controlled by Chicago. Two minutes left. In regulation, Blues again wants the Hawks uh, come on the center circle. And Jeremy Roney, spin it right wing. Dubitsky tried to take the pass. He couldn't do it. The Blues take it away. Doug Grossman laid it up. Korolev unable to get to the biscuit. And the Hawks again settle in here with the uh, puck at their own line. Roney with a minute 37 to go. In 20 seconds, they will get a power play here for the rest of the game. Suter comes in, he'll run right into Korolev and just swing the puck on the backhand behind the Blues goal. Prokhorov again takes a lead pass, breaking back to the Chicago end left side. Korolev takes a wrist shot, that was partially deflected. Chicago has the puck, and Dubinsky coming uh, to center red, and he'll just gain the St. Louis blue line and shoot the puck in. On the power play now, the Chicago Blackhawks with a minute seven to go in the third period. They have to go all the way back to their own end to take possession. Now this is the ninth power play for Chicago as we go into the last minute of play of regulation time. And the Blues continue really kind of a mastery over the Hawks this year. Play very well against them. Here's Shanahan losing the puck and it comes down to Rich Center and he put the first shot block picked up and a hard drive by Chelios at the outside of the pipe goes behind the goal. Around now in front of center and he snaps one off again wide of the cage. Right point, here's Chelios, 35 to go in the game. Around to Jeff Shantz. Shantz of the Hawks. Couldn't connect on the play behind the goal to Rich Sutter. The Hawks working around to the left point. Carney's out there. He poked it down the boards. And the Blues are going to get to it, and Duchesne rattle it around the wood, and it's going to take it all the way back to the Chicago win. That might run the clock out. 15 seconds to go. Chelios back and realizing they aren't going to score here. He just comes up very slowly. He'll let the time run out. It comes to Chance on the left wing. Get to the St. Louis blue line. We're down to four. And they'll take it off. And the Blues will be winners here tonight against Chicago. And that does it. That wraps it up. A big night for the St. Louis Blues. They come off the road trip, and uh, you'd think maybe two might be a little leery and the legs a little weak, but they play a strong game, and uh, their special teams superb tonight, Joe. Yeah, they really were. That was the difference in the game, Mike. The special teams. Chicago 0 for 9 on the power play. The Blues with three power play goals. And when there was a breakdown, Curtis Joseph was there to, to make the big saves. And Brendan Shanahan got the Blues off on the right foot, scoring the first two goals, playing a physical game, and being very involved. It was a tremendous team victory for St. Louis. And we'll return to the arena here in St. Louis. The final score tonight, St. Louis 5 and Chicago 1. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. And back at the arena tonight, the Blues winners over the Chicago Blackhawks by the score of 5-1. to one. And the uh, third period summary is brought to you by your neighborhood Hardy's Restaurants, the St. Louis team, of course, for crispy, juicy fried chicken. Here it is, the summary. The Blues, Brett Hall with his 54th of the year. And then Miller scored at 11.52. Nedved 
really put the capper on Joe uh, to make it a 5-1 game, and uh, they go on and win it in uh, pretty good fashion against uh, Chicago here tonight. Yeah, it was a good game here, and again, we talk about the special teams of this game, Mike, and that really was the difference in this game. Chicago had chances, and their power play had been pretty good coming into this game tonight, but not tonight. The Blues penalty killers with an outstanding job keeping the Blackhawks uh, off balance somewhat, and then those, late two, those two late power play goals when Belfort took the double minor really sealed the victory for the you Blues. Know, and I looked early on in the game. We talked about the penalty killing. We talked about Brett Hall, how he was breaking up plays and doing and Housley and some other people. And really, if you look back on it, those were the crucial moments of the game because it did not allow Chicago really to, to get back into it and take the lead at all. Yeah, that's right. I mean, so much credit should be given to Brendan Shanahan, Brett Hall. The Blues defense, I thought, in front of Curtis Joseph did a good job. And again, Curtis Joseph was there when, when needed. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the uh, three stars in tonight's game and uh, all St. Louis Blues players. And Craig Janney was uh, number three. Budweiser, uh, three stars. Craig Janney, the number three star, had three assists on the game tonight, including his 500th NHL point. Curtis Joseph, we talked about, faced 40 shots. He's the number two star. And the number one star of the game who really set the tone to this game was Brendan Shanahan. He scored two goals to get the Blues going, was very effective in his ability to play physically and, and control the game six shots in the first period I really thought that he set the tone for this game Mike yeah he did and, uh, and then it got a little rough at the end and of course now you got to look towards the rematch coming up what kind of a game you got to have back <laughs> with him again like this <laughs> yeah probably will all right we've uh, got Bruce uh, standing by downstairs and let's go down to Bruce Affleck Bruce well, thank you, Mike. Uh, quite a game, obviously, for the Blues, and the special team's a, a big thing tonight. Uh, Rick, I guess that's the good news going into the playoffs. Blues get three playoff uh, or power play goals here tonight. Yeah, both ends of it. The power play was tremendous, and the, and the penalty killers were great again. And, you know, coming in, Joe mentioned that Chicago had been at a 25% pace on the power play coming in this game. So they did a great job, and uh, they have a guy back there named Curtis Joseph who is very <laughs> good tonight, too. I could look pretty good uh, tonight with him behind me, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, the Blackhawks 0 for 9 on the power play. Uh, and I thought Tom Tilly probably had his best game of the year. He played well. He played very well. He was strong. He made a nice play on uh, Kevin Miller's goal to get the puck in deep and get behind the net and have enough presence to know that Craig was there, drop him the puck, and then get back to his position. But he had a strong game, played very well. well we're going to take a look at the Budweiser play of the game, and it happened in the second period after the Blues had lost the lead. Uh, Chicago tied it up 1-1, and a big goal here. Well, they drop the puck here, and we deflect it, and Phil Housey knocks it out of the air and doesn't stop it, just gives it right up to Brendan Shanahan, who picks it up skating backwards turns around, comes over the blue line, and right here he winds up and fakes the shot and gets Belfort stationary, not moving, slides along the ice to the far side, and just one of the nicest goals I've seen in a long time. Brendan Shannon's second goal of the game. It was his 45th goal, and it ended up being the winning goal. That's our Budweiser play of the game. Well, it, uh, I guess that's uh, the way it should have ended. A rough game like that, the Blues and the Blackhawks, last regular season game probably between those two teams in this building. Maybe they'll meet in the playoffs, but it would be the third round probably. But uh, I guess you'd expect that for these two teams uh, to get a little rough at the end, especially in a 5-1 game. Absolutely. When the game gets that far out of hand, I guess, with two or three goals, you can expect that type of thing, especially when Darren Kimball's on the ice and Greg Smith and some of the other guys. But, uh, you know, Kelly Chase is probably uh, can't, still can't move his arms, I don't imagine. But, you know, they stuck up for one another, which is nice to see, and it brings the team closer together. We played in Detroit the other night, and the finish was kind of the same thing. You know, there was a lot of physical play, but the guys stuck together, and this makes your team better. You know, I know Ron Caron was mentioning before the game that they'd like to solidify their position in the playoffs. This puts them five points ahead of Chicago and Vancouver. And really, uh, with the game against L.A. Thursday, they could go into Chicago 7-up. And, uh, you know, I think that's for the Blues, especially uh, going into the playoffs. It is. Uh, you know, and they're playing well right now, too. And we talked about it earlier, how they're gelling together as a team. They're playing more together as a team. But, yeah, you get up that many points, and maybe you can get to a point where you can say, hey, Brendan or Brett or Curtis, you can take a night off. I'm going to rush you for the playoffs. But uh, they do. They want to finish as far up as they possibly can. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a long way to find out who is going to play who in the playoffs. A lot of fun here tonight, though, and uh, we had a lot of fun, and I wrote some of these down. Uh, the Butcher Dog, beat him like a mule. Uh, he gets to the hot water first. Uh, it was a lot of fun, Mike. Uh, we enjoyed it. Good job, and uh, let's take a look at the out-of-town scoreboards. All right, I didn't give them all to you either. We're going to save uh, a few for maybe later on sometime. <laughs> Here's the scoreboard. Toronto leads Dallas 4-2, to two, an important game, Joe, for the uh, uh, Blues. Yeah, and, and the Blues most likely will face one of those two teams in the playoffs, and Toronto had not been playing very well, but going to Dallas and seemed like they're playing pretty good hockey all of a sudden. Florida and Quebec ended up in a 3-3 tie. That helps Florida's chances for a playoff spot, uh, the first ever in their history. And the Islanders rally to beat Washington 4-3. So the Isles are still alive. They're making a run uh, towards both the Washington and Florida. Detroit leading Vancouver 2-0 first period on the West Coast. And San Jose leads Los Angeles 
one nothing at uh, Los Angeles. Well, Mike, I'd just like to take the time to say uh, thank you. You did a great job for coming in and filling in for Ken, and uh, we will see you on the road. Thanks again. All right, we'll get him back soon, and uh, we tell you uh, the final score once again, the St. Louis Blues 5 and the Chicago Blackhawks 1. We say goodnight from the arena. St. Louis Blues hockey has been a presentation of Bud Sports through the facilities of KPLR TV and KMOX Radio. Our next telecast on KPLR will be uh, on Channel 11 Friday night from Chicago. The telecast start time is 7.30 Central Time. Hockey brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you friends know when to say when. Your Missouri, Illinois, Lincoln Mercury dealers, McDonald's restaurants, your place for extra value meals. Fly Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. The Discover Card, the card with a big payback. Your Midwest GMC truck dealers, Bellman, Bomarito, and Brockland GMC. Alton Bell Casino, always your best bet. Boatman's with home equity loans designed to do just one sensible thing, save you money. Taco Bell, cross the border. Your neighborhood, St. Louis Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Corporate mortgage services, where the American dream becomes reality. Hardy's restaurants for crispy, juicy fried chicken. And buy Coca-Cola, always best on ice.